the end of the day, right, you need to take care of the business you can take care of. And, that, and right now they got to do it, handle and go out there and get a win against a really, really tough team. I mean, Jackson State's been consistent the entire season long, and Alcorn knows exactly what they have to do, and they're going to have to play some incredible, incredible game. getting set for the opening kickoff now. Alcorn State will receive to get the ball game underway. And they're trying to set a record attendance today at Veterans Memorial Stadium. As they come in today, the record for this series is 62,512. They're trying to surpass that today. We'll find out if they did. The kickoff goes long, sails through the end zone. So the Braves will start first and 10 from their 25. That means we will get our first look at quarterback Felix Harper. He's the 5'11", 180-pound redshirt junior. As we mentioned on the top, he is fourth in the SWAC in passing with 2,279 yards. He's also tossed 19 touchdowns with only four interceptions. You see he'll be wearing coming on there wearing number two for the Braves. Very interesting thing about this young man because he's a lefty, but he can really spin the football and they count on him a lot, you know. Coach uh, McNair says he's a very smart young man who's actually elevated his game this year and he said, you know what? He's our quiet leader on offense. He doesn't do a lot vocally, but boy, he gets it done with his play on the field. So he starts it with a handoff straight ahead, go the Braves to Stafford Anderson. His first carry of the game. A young man who's really come on the last couple of weeks so far on the season. 497 rushing yards for this young man. Of course, he transferred in from Northwestern State. So it'll be second down coming up now for the Braves. Yeah, it'll, be, it'll be interesting to see how Alcorn deals with the incredible blitz that just relentless comes from Jackson State. Because you know they're coming almost every play, whether it's a run blitz, a pass blitz. Uh, they like bringing the house. You're talking about one of the top defenses in the SWAC. So second down, about nine yards. Harper under pressure from that defensive line, and he goes down in the arms of James Houston. He comes up with a big sack. He came into this ball game with a lot of sacks. He had 12.5 coming in today, and just tack on one more right there. Yeah, I was just talking about the way they blitz and how they're coming at him. And again, actually, he took on right up the middle comes right around that edge, got help from all his boys around, and basically there was nowhere for him to go, so he got the sack. They did a good job of staying in their lanes, yep. staying in their lanes, forcing him to the middle, and they came up with the sack. So that's a perfect sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> they just keep it all in the middle and then close in on him. Harper did a good job of getting back close to the line of scrimmage. And now we're going to talk it over a little bit here. So right away, we got something to talk about. On the first drive, we saw that Jackson State defense step up and make a big play, so the Braves take a timeout. Yeah, I think it's one of those things where it's almost like your coach says, hey, guys, we talked about this, right? And he wants to make something clear early. It's uh, Obviously, it's super early in your very first drive, your third play, or getting ready to start your third play. And obviously, the coaches have seen something and said, wait a minute, guys, we've seen this. We talked about it. What are you doing? Well, let's take a look now at our cricket impact players for Alcorn State. They are on offense. Number two, you've already been introduced to Felix Harper. Nico Duffy will get some action in the backfield today. And Jawan Taylor, he has been outstanding on defense. 75 tackles outstanding. That's how good he is. Third in the SWAC in tackles. So you know he's a guy that, you know, you call guys ball hawks, et cetera. He just... He just he's like a, a defensive back linebacker, really, is what he is. <laughs> Hybrid. So third and long for Felix Harper and the offense for the Braves. Three wide receivers to his right. Harper throws underneath, completes his pass to Manny Jones, and Manny Jones will be knocked down about three yards shy of the sticks. So the Alcorn State Braves will have to punt the football away. 
Yeah, the Braves did a much better job of, of taking on that blitz because, again, what they're doing blitz, they're stunning all the time. There's, you, you, you're very rarely are you seeing them come straight at you. There's always little swings, guys going in, guys coming around, and they're making sure the discipline of an offensive line stays that way throughout the game. So Rubens Bopland will come on to punt the football away for the Braves. Deep to return, Warren Newman, number 10, and he'll have to chase this one down. A great kick drives Newman back inside the 10. He scoops it up at the 7. Newman with some room to go. Cuts back, still on his feet. Ducks under one would-be tackler, and Newman is finally dropped at the 45-yard line. So a great return by Warren Newman of the punt. That's that classic outkick your coverage right there. And again, I mean, it looked like nothing was going to happen. And I think the, the Braves just kind of relax just that little bit, and that starts to give you a little bit of room. And again, he just turns right up, and he's going straight. <laughs> and he, he takes whatever's given to him. A great return there and a great setup by the special team. Warren Newman is second in the SWAC in punt returns, averaging almost 18 a return. And he did a lot better than that right there, bringing it back just shy of midfield. Let's check out now our impact players brought to you by Cricket for Jackson State. We have Shadur Sanders, James Houston, who's already made a sack, and Keith Corbin, who's one of their top receivers. As Sanders goes upstairs and completes the pass to Corbin. So that was a perfect list of impact <laughs> players. We got Shadur Sanders making a big play to Keith Corbin. Did you did you call that first play? Is that what that's happening? You in the headsets over there? We're, we're in touch with Coach Prime, and he made that happen just for us. Yeah. Can you, you believe that one? <laughs> Keith Corbin has been one of their best receivers of late. The transfer from U of H, the University of Houston. He's 6'2", the 200-pounder out of Beaumont. But as we said, Shador Sanders is your starting quarterback today. Sanders with an empty backfield looking to pass. He's under pressure and taken down. A nice job there on the rush by number 44, Jacorian Wren, making the sack as Coach Prime looks on. You know, every time I see that shot of him, though, in, in the chair, you know he's a guy full of energy, and in a normal game, you see him going up and down the, the sidelines. For him to be able to be that calm and sit there, that's got to be tough for him. And again, props to the Braves are getting pressure. When you can get pressure up the middle, I don't care who's the quarterback, it's very hard to throw the ball. Second down now for the Tigers. Sanders with time. Steps up in the pocket. Now he's going to run it, and he cannot get around the corner. Another big play right there by the defense. Number 32, Claude and Cherry Lus coming up there quickly to make the tackle. He has 69 on the year, make it 70 after that play. Yeah, he's, he's ranked sixth in the SWAC in tackles. And again, you know, some people just have a nose for the football, right? And then there's another thing. You actually have to make the tackle when you get there. He closes up, right? He, he makes it happen. You know, they're trying to set the record today. The record is 62,512 fans in Veterans Memorial Stadium. It is loud, and I, I would bet you they've already set that record as we have a big third down coming up now for the Tigers. Sanders slides up in the pocket, rolls out to his right, fires underneath near the sidelines. It is caught and knocked out of bounds short of a first down. Yeah, the defensive Braves had great, great coverage there, and there was nowhere to go with the ball but there. And again, it was just too short there at the end. That was Jensi Riley who made the catch. Short of the first down on the play, so now the Tigers will have to punt the football back to the Braves. So both defenses step up early and shut down the other offense, right? Three and outs, that's big. Fourth and about 13 as they get set to kick it away. Good snap, Bailey Rayburn hits it high. Fair catch is called for and made right at the 10-yard line. So that is where the Braves will go back on offense as they take over. That was number three, C.J. Bowler, on the fair catch. Timeout on the field, so we'll...
Jackson, Mississippi. As you see, the fans, they're, they're packed <laughs> in, and they're ready for some excitement today. When you talk about this series, a, a huge series, they've met 75 times, and JSU leads the series 45-29-1. First game was actually played back in 1946. So here come the Braves, first and 10, deep in their own territory, and the pass is complete to Juan Anthony Jr. That was Harper to Juan Anthony for a short game. But a great slam pattern, right? They took what they gave him, a nice little quick juke move, and just turns inside. And, and, and uh, uh, Harper hit them right in the numbers. So this drive started from their own 10 yard line. Harper coming up with a second and five, and that will be illegal procedure against the Braves as one of the offensive linemen jumped early. I'll tell you, you get pretty twitchy when you got a, a team like the Tigers coming right at you, and you know they're stunned, you know they have all kind of moves. It's hard to be an offensive lineman in there looking, because you, you, you know something's coming, you just don't know what it is. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point, because you have to be alert, because they're coming, and these guys have excelled at rushing the passer all year long, so they can expect a lot of pressure there. So back him up five. This time he hands inside. And look at the response by the Jackson State defense. I mean, they had four gray jerseys, and they almost took the handoff. It was a gray out in the backfield. <laughs> That's not what you want if you're the Braves. And again, when I, when I mentioned they stunt, I mean, if you want to give, uh, uh, you know, any kind of defense, you want to stunt lessons, you just watch what they do. I mean, they do all different types of stunts coming from all different directions. So as an offensive lineman, you have to be very, very disciplined in your, in your authority, right, of who you take, and when you let some guy go and you're waiting for the guy who's coming in. Because if one guy takes off on you, there's a guy coming right behind you. Trust me. Nico Duffy was like, who turned off the sun? I mean, he just <laughs> saw nothing but darkness there. We got a third and long now for Felix Harper and the Braves. Harper steps back to his two-yard line, fires deep down the sidelines, and he just overshot Juan Anthony Jr. And Juan Anthony thought there was some contact going on down the sidelines. And there is a flag on the play, so he's, I think he may have gotten that one right. Yeah, I think he was showing him, look, he pulled my shoulder pads off. You think Holden is involved? And I will say this, Coach, Coach Sanders has talked about the fact that he holds his cornerbacks accountable, right? I mean, he's one of the best that's ever played when it comes to coverage. So his, what he expects, his expectations of his cornerbacks are you better be in their face and you better be on them. We don't have a real shot of the defender on them yet. But, but, but they play man on man, get in your face, physical cornerback, and they stay on them. Al Young was the guilty party for the Tigers. He was caught holding on the play, so it's a first down for the Braves. They come back, they give it to Nico Duffy, and he's thrown down in the backfield. Antoine Owens with some quick reactions there, and he's in the backfield to make the stop. Loss of yardage on the play for the Braves. Yeah, big Owens, 6'4", 290, and look how quick he comes. And again, he just sealed that, that end. There was nowhere for him to cut back. He just ate him up. Max just gobbled him up. He's ready for turkey day already. <laughs> well, Owens just came right over Columbus Willis uh, over there, and he, he just came right through him, and he was in the backfield. Didn't even slow him down. Yeah, you can see they move Owens around, right? So not only are they stunting, they move guys around. So it's not the same guy you're looking at every time. So you got to get used to all the different moves of the D linemen and linebackers that are coming in. So third down, under pressure, and it goes down, and that's a face mask call. So it's a big sack on the play by 97, Devonta Davis. But in the process of making the sack, he grabbed the face mask. You get excited. <laughs> and what's aggravating about that face mask is kind of like a pinky face mask, right? If you watch him, it's not his whole hand grab right now. Look, he just attacks, goes right through the block. I think his hand just gets caught up in that face mask. But great, great effort. You get great pressure by the Tigers. This will be the second first down on the drive for the Braves. Second first down by penalty on this drive. So right now, Tigers are beating themselves. Cor correct. First and 10 for Alcorn State. Harper gives inside to Nico Duffy. Excuse me, that's... Anderson, Stanford Anderson on the carry, and he gets maybe a yard. Yeah, Aubrey Miller Jr., man, that linebacker. And again, you know, we talked about the defensive lineman stunt, but that also, when you when that's happening, your linebackers have a lot more movement, right? When those when defensive linemen are causing commotion up front, linebackers get to roam and attack, and they've got two linebackers that are just, Aubrey Miller and Keontae Hampton, that 
just roam and they are aggressive. And, and again, I love them because they're short tackles, right? They don't get there and just try to put the hit. They take them to the ground. Second and eight, credit him with two. Harper will pass again. The bowler underneath, and bowler slips a tackle, and he's going to be very close to the first down. Let me tell you, if you're going to come a, a tight slant like that inside where the linebackers live, you got to have be brave. You have to run. He's a brave, all right. <laughs> so that is a first down for the Braves. Nice move there by C.J. Bowler, one of their top receivers. He has 628 yards and five touchdowns so far this year first and ten again Stanford Anderson goes straight ahead this time he picks up about four so they're determined to keep running the ball inside even though Jackson State has been tough early on so far the Braves are still pounding that middle well the good news for Alcorn is is that you, you, you haven't really been all that successful per se but you've got the penalties that have kept you on the field longer which allows you to collect yourself and start getting a rhythm. We've seen it many times. A team starts off super flat, and something happens, and they're able to get a rhythm. And that's what you can kind of see. The Braves starting to get something going. Second down coming up for the Braves. Harper again rose to his right this time, fires, and he misses his man. He was open. He was trying to hit LeCharles Pringle. He has been his top receiver this year. Those two guys have a great connection. They seem to always know where each other, where they are on the football field, but not on that play. Yeah, and I like that play. Everything looks like it was going to go to the left at first, and then he does that little swing rollout. And again, he, his man was a Pringle was open. He just didn't hit him. And again, he almost threw it more towards the defender than he did his own receiver. So the Braves are looking at another third down on this possession, the third on this drive. Last two times, they actually got it the first down via penalty. So third and eight for Harper and the offense. Felix Harper steps up, and he's hit, but he got away. Good job by Felix Harper, and he just overthrew Stafford Anderson. <laughs> but give Harper a lot of credit for getting out of that jam. Man, his quick feet right there. I mean, he, he should have been dead to rights at the beginning, but he had quick feet, did the, the quick turn, and again, his instincts were fantastic here. Watch this. Gets in trouble. Boom. He just spins right real quick. And then he sees his running back and just flops it. Let him just a little bit too much. But that could have been a really big play if he'd have been able to connect. But that great was instinct. James Houston bringing the pressure. He already has a sack in this ball game and uh, may have had number two right there, except Felix Harper pulled off the great escapes. So the Braves will punt the football away. Warren Newman chases it down at about the 8, steps out of bounds at the 10. So that is where the Tigers will go on offense, first and 10. So far, all defense in this one, we are scoreless.
up the Tigers on offense now with 5.18 to go here in the first quarter. So far, it's been a defensive struggle in this one as both defenses have been rising to the occasion. Both defenses have been very, very aggressive. Sanders turns and hands it straight ahead as the Tigers try to get something going with the running game. That is Peyton Pickett with his first carry of the ball game. Let me tell you something, the battle in the in the trenches is absolutely spectacular. I mean, it is, that right there looked like a WWE cage match. <laughs> there were guys all over. I mean, it, not for the faint of heart right inside there. I'm telling you, both sides just in a epic battle in that one play alone. Jacorian Wren making another stop for the Braves. So second and seven, he got like two and a half, almost three yards there. Let's call it seven. Shadur Sanders has to step out of the pocket, rolls to his left, looks downfield, has a man all by himself. It's a completed pass to Shane Hooks. And Shane Hooks has the first down and more. Excuse me, that is Trevante Rucker, number 50. Yeah, and Rucker could have done the real easy thing, right? Just step right out of bounds. But well, watch him right there. He's like, yeah, no, little back step, and then just kind of tucked it in. I like the way he covered the ball real well. He knew he was going to get hit in different angles. Got him an extra couple yards. That was Rucker's 20th catch on the year. The freshman from Ocala, Florida, and we have a whistle on the field and a stoppage of play. So this time, the timeout goes to Jackson State. Coach Prime wants his team to talk things over. Yeah, it, it's interesting. They're not shy about timeouts. <laughs> Now, I mean, what, what you're wondering here is right on that particular thing, he saw something that his offense either wasn't lined up or they didn't like what they were doing there. And, and I mean, that's, you know, we just want to get it right. Well, let's take a look now at the Jackson State keys to the game brought to you by USAA. Establish the, some balance on offense, keep a clean pocket, and then execute in the red zone. So that's uh, keep a clean pocket there for Shadour Sanders. Yeah, I think that's what we want right yeah. there. Yeah, but again, when you get offensive balance, and that's why, you know, you've seen both these teams actually still run up the middle, not a whole lot of success early. Uh, you want to create something so the defense has to respect the run, which can open up your passing game. Whenever you can be balanced, it just makes you a whole lot more or less predictable, for sure. You know, we mentioned Jackson State clinched the Eastern Division title last week, and they did it in fine fashion coming from behind. We'll talk about that. But the Tigers also moved up in the rankings this week as they operate first and 10 and a little jet sweep coming back the other way and it's going to be a short gain for the Tigers. That was number one, Josh Lanier on the carry. Yeah, Braves did a nice job of just stringing that out, right? You watch that whole group just went right down the line. It, it looked immediately like it was gonna be a bigger play, but they just did a great job of stretching it out. And then, you know, you stretch something out so all your friends can come help out. Josh Lanier is a transfer from Alabama, walked on at Alabama, and then moved on to Jackson State this year, doing a fine job for the Tigers. Second and about four now coming up for Shadour Sanders in the offense. He throws underneath again. It is caught by Shane Hooks. He steps out of bounds after making that grab. He was right at the sticks there but he's gonna come up a little short. Well, I thought he got it. I can't really see the markers where that is, but I, I thought just from the route, I thought he had it. And that's one of those things you tell your receiver, look. So it, it was a first down, they just moved oh, the chain. So it is a first down for the Tigers. <laughs> Sanders turns, hands it to Pickett. Pickett just pushing that line forward. That's a quick four yards, and it looked like it was going to be nothing on the play, and that pile just kept moving forward. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's, that's special when you see that happen again. He, he got right behind Trey Johnson, big offensive lineman, and he just, like you said, right there said, boom, all right, here I go. <laughs> and then they all just pile-drived on. I think the battle's inside. This is one of the, 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 the toughest scenes I've seen <laughs> in the SWAC as far as the battles in the in the interior line. 
Peyton Pickett set to Shadur Sanders right. He pitches to Pickett. A couple of nice blocks, and Pickett dives forward for a gain of about five. He's close to five on the play. So a nice, strong run by Peyton Pickett, the transfer from Liberty. Tiger's starting to get a little bit of a rhythm, right? We talked about that run game with the pass. You get a little success in your run. You're going to see something open up there. But again, I, I'll tell you, the, the, the battles that are going on, it, it is relentless in there. He came up a yard shy of the first down. So now we have third and one for the Tigers to keep this drive alive. Just crossed midfield. Turns and he gives to Pickett again, and he has the first down and more. I mean, Pickett using all of his 225 pounds right there to get that first down. Pickett, Pickett run is running like a man on a mission today. I mean, he just looks very, very focused and dialed in. Again, look, see how he just, I mean, absolutely, there wasn't a whole lot there, but he did that one little move to his left, saw some daylight, and just trucked in there for the first down. Amari Ketchings with a great block inside. He just kind of cleared out an area there and Pickens just went in behind him to pick up the first down so Jackson State with the most sustained drive here in the first quarter with the ball resting at about the 44 yard line this time he fakes to pick Sanders is looking way downfield and it's going to be incomplete he was trying to hit Shane hooks but it was a little too long I'll tell you yeah he just didn't he, he didn't he didn't dial it in just right you know, for an accurate quarterback, that's just, that was one he just didn't get right. But, you know, as a quarterback, you just have to go, all right, I miss that one, let's go, right? I mean, you, you start to go, man, and get all, all worked up on it, you can't play. Well, that's the thing about Sanders. I mean, he's a true freshman, but he's mature beyond his age. And this time he gives to Pickett, and the Braves were not fooled that time. They were in the backfield, and Pickett goes down. Said, and, and, you know, you talk about Sanders, and that's why they call him grown, because <laughs> he's uh, grown beyond his years as far as his maturity level. And again, maturity level, you don't talk a lot, a lot about that. Uh, but man, maturity level is so big. You know, how you handle people, how what your persona is with your teammates, it's huge. That was Jacorian Wren, the first Alcorn State player to get to him, and he's been busy here in the first quarter. We've called out his name a lot with 27 seconds to go left in the quarter. Third down for the Tigers. Shadur Sanders will have three wide receivers out to his left as he changes the play at the line. And now the officials are going to get into this. And they're going to let the clock tick down. And we will come to the end of the first quarter. As you see Shadur Sanders on the sideline visiting. That'll be the end of the first quarter. No score down in Jackson.
Jackson State Tigers are taking on the Alcorn State Braves. You can see we have no score as we get set to start the second quarter. And what do you think about that defensive matchup we've had? That's good. No score and no room for anyone else to sit in there. It is a packed, packed house. Great environment here at the stadium. And again, I love seeing the support out here for these two teams. Yeah, you know, they were looking to have over... 62,000 there, close to 63,000 at the game. Of course, that would set the record, which was set back in 1996. You know, Jackson State normally averages about 36, 37 a game, so that wow. would be double what they usually get. Great so the atmosphere. Tigers still have the football now. Operating second and 11, and we have movement up front, and the flag will go down. Two tackles basically just jumped. How much, we were just talking about the crowd, how much did that have to do with the offensive line, you know, moving like that? That's the second time we've saw movement in the line so far in this ballgame. Yeah, I think, I think sometimes you get that energy level going and sometimes you just get cranked up a little too much. And again, that crowd's supposed to be a little bit more quiet when your own offense is out there. But I think it just gets an energy level where you just get twitchy. So third and 16 for Shadur Sanders. They try the screen pass, and it's blown up by the Braves. They were right there and were not fooled on that play. Number 13, Macarius Blunt, one of the guys near the football. Oh, they were just, man, coming. Look at that. And, and, and they read it. I mean, you know, when you when you read something, you go out there and you see the play and you react on it. Uh, there's nothing but a better feeling. You can tell the energy level of the Braves. Uh, they, they are fired up. And again, the battles inside are special today. I mean, it's it's both defenses, the defensive lines and offensive lines are doing a great job of battling. So the Tigers punt the football away. It's going to bounce inside the 10, roll down to the five, and will finally be touched down at about the four. So the Braves will take over in the shadow of their own end zone. I'm Kayla Let's Thompson. go We're down here at to the Texas Memorial on Stadium in Jackson, Mississippi. Now, right now, both teams are scoreless in the second quarter, but this is a major game. This is some game that people really want for those bragging rights, but not only the bragging rights, but the ability to make sure that they make it known that they want this game today. Jackson State is doing a great job, just as well as Alcorn State. Neither team right now giving up any points for making major plays throughout this game. And we're going to continue to follow that all game long. Again, we're still here scoreless, both teams in the second quarter. We'll be back. Thank you, Kayla. We go back down onto the field where Felix Harper and the Braves are operating out of their own end zone. Turns, fakes the handoff. He's going to throw it downfield over the top, and he has a man. That's Juan Anthony, and that's a big play for the Braves that they got out of a huge hole right there. Anthony did an absolutely fantastic job catching this ball. And again, Harper places it up there. Look at the adjustment on the ball. You can't really see it there. But he kind of leaned into his defender a little bit and then turned shoulder and was able to catch that catch that ball in midair. What a great call, though, by Elliot Rathen, the offensive coordinator. And, you know, you deepen your own end zone, basically, and he throws it out. That's just a big-time play. That's confidence in your quarterback knowing he's not going to throw a bad ball. Football goes all the way out to the 31, and they give straight ahead to Anderson. He's going to be stacked up after a short game. Davis just stoned that side of the, of the offensive line. He went nowhere. Yeah, Devonta you. Davis, you know, he's been a force in this game early on. I mean, that Jackson State defense is really tough. I mean, Coach Dennis Thurman, who actually, like Coach Prime, has a lot of that NFL experience. He coached with the Bills and the Jets, and so he knows what he's doing, and he has this Jackson State defense really in high gear. I mean, they've had an outstanding year so far. Harper under pressure again, fires, and a great catch this time by Pringle. And it's another first down for the Braves. The receivers are just making a great uh, adjustment in the air. Look at it, because it's actually kind of like it's supposed to go to the inside, but they do a little turn, jump up in the air. Both, both catches were very similar. They're going quickly now. Harper throws underneath, and that one is incomplete. Nice coverage there by Aubrey Miller. But you can see the Braves have kind of found something now. They're, they're, they're 
finding the man who's being covered one-on-one, -on -one and they're testing him with their receivers. Well, it's kind of a back shoulder throw, even though you're kind of running a slant. Puts you through to the back shoulder. That's kind of what's, what's happened on both of those. So as a defender, they were in the right spot, but the ball's thrown opposite, and your receiver's good enough to make the adjustment. Second and three with the ball resting at the 43-yard line. Nico Duffy carries straight ahead, and Duffy's going to pick up about four. He's finally stopped by Keontae Hampton, one of the guys, the big linebacker. Yeah, and it was kind of a, a linebacker party, right? <laughs> Miller was right there with him, too. He's like, man, I want part of that. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Number 40 got there first, and 45 was right on top of Tell him. So. A race to the backfield, so that will bring up third down for the Braves. Felix Harper has had the Midas touch on this drop. Has Duffy to his right. Under pressure, Harper gets away, and now he's caught from behind. The ball is fumbled, and the Braves alertly got on that football. So as Harper is hit from behind, he loses the football. It's down on the ground, and a nice recovery by number 79, T.J. Yarborough who was right there to make the recovery for the Braves. Yeah, what I like about what Yarbrough did is he, tried, he didn't try to do anything fancy, right? He saw the ball down, I'm going to go lay on it, <laughs> right? I'm not going to try to pick it up, do anything, like right here. I'm on it, that's it, right? Just a great job on the play. And, you know, we mentioned, uh, you know, we have Shadur Sanders, who's the quarterback for the Tigers, but we also have another Sanders playing defense. Shiloh Sanders, Dion's other son, is playing defense for the Tigers. So the Braves will punt this one away. Low kick. Short, but a great roll for the Braves, and it just trickles into the end zone. That was almost an outstanding punt. Just about pin, had them pinned down deep in their own territory, but it goes through the end zone, so it is a touchback. We're going to pause for a timeout. Still... Welcome back, everyone. There you see Coach Prime on the Jackson State sideline. We mentioned his toe injury. He had surgery back in September. Had some complications. Have to get it, had to get it redone again. And so he missed a couple of games, but he's back on the sidelines. Returned for the first time last week, and now he's watching his Tigers operate first and ten. And it's a complete pass right there. Completed pass from Shadur Sanders to Chavante Rucker. Brutal, brutal tackle. 
Rucker 21 catches this year for over 400 yards now with a couple of touchdowns. So first and 10 for the Tigers. They go to the running game this time, and the Braves are in the backfield. J.D. Martin took the handoff, but he had nowhere to go. A quick reaction by Malcolm McGee and company as they were in the backfield all over J.D. Martin. Yeah, Tyreek Martin was the first one to disrupt the play. Uh, he, he made him change course real quick, and then, hey, I invite my friends over to finish, <laughs> finish the damage. Like you said before, party in the backfield. That's and, uh, right. <laughs> there, there's a rush to get there, so a big play there. It's going to be a loss of one there. And again, I'm just impressed with both, again, defensive lines and offensive lines. I think it is just a war down there. Second and 11, Sanders way back to pass. Shoots it out near the sidelines, and it's going to be incomplete. He was trying to hit Rucker as he made his break to the sideline, but that was an unusually deep uh, drop by the quarterback. Yeah, no, and, and again, I, maybe that threw off the way that timing of the pass was because again the one thing about Sanders is uh, 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 Harper it, you know he's excuse me Sanders and, and just that was way off it looked like he didn't get his feet down to I don't know if there was just something about that whole play uh, he just didn't didn't have it key third down coming up now for the Tigers they put Warren Newman in motion to the right Sanders steps up in the pocket. Now he rose to his right. Under pressure, and he's caught from behind. May have gotten a couple of yards on the play, but he is dropped. Great defensive play by the Braves. Bobby Harrington, look at him. He just keeps his motor going. He sees him, slows down, and just runs right through him. Harrington with the big tackle there. Just a nice job, and, and you're right. You've seen it on both sides from both yeah. uh, defensive defensive lines. They're putting pressure on the quarterback. And, and again, I say when I when I say the offensive lines are doing well too, because you just watch the battle. I mean, it, it is it is furious. So Lane yeah, McGregor there. comes on to punt the football away. Good snap, gets it away. He had pressure right in his face. It's a short kick. And it's going to roll around and stop right at about the 33-yard line. So that is where the Braves and Felix Harper will take over the football. They'll have first and 10 when we come back.
as you can see there's a packed house here at veterans memorial stadium and i think they're doing the wave i'll tell you i'm, <laughs> I'm uh, a little bit dizzy on that one uh, whew, the energy level out here is just crazy and again i mean it's a sardine can <laughs> you know it's a great college football atmosphere as you see felix harper number two there and the braves with the football first and ten throws underneath to bowler he's going to pick up about four and then look at the tigers react to the football it's the second time bowler has been uh asked to come across the no man's land and each time he gets i mean three four five people tackling at a time that is that is tough i'll tell you look at the crowd it's awesome sanders seven out of eight passing so far for about 50 yards in this ball game but he's been under pressure they're both teams have put a lot of heat on the offense as you see felix harper right there and his numbers harper five of eight for 77 yards as he turns and hands right up the middle javata leatherwood on the carry number 25 his first carry of the ball game And that was a real successful run for what we've seen today. That's probably the biggest run from scrimmage. Yeah, you're right. You know, that's the best looking four yard run I've seen. <laughs> I mean, he did a good job bouncing off of would be tacklers, just, you know, using his strength and the strength in his legs to pound forward. So now we have a third down for Harper and the Braves. Harper gives it back to Leatherwood, and he may have been able to pick up the first down. He, I, he may be short, but had he not lost his footing, he would have had it for sure. Yeah, I mean, he had it wide open there. He made the right cut right there, just stumbled. I think he may have gotten there. It looked like he did. A first and 10 for the Braves after that run by Javanta Leatherwood. He was surprised there was room, is what the deal was. <laughs> Harper to pass on first down, looks down the sideline, and he was trying to hit Bowler, but a flag comes in. There may have been some contact near the sideline. Looks like it was on Anthony Petty. And again, the reason why I say that is, he, you know, he was in the coverage there, and he didn't even argue the flag, so. <laughs> My guess is he was like, yep, I did it. <laughs> so that will be an automatic first down there for the Braves. Alcorn is definitely winning the battle of the penalties in this game. It seems like there's been at least a third or the fourth defensive penalty of the game going against the Jackson State Tigers. So first and ten. Gives ahead to Leatherwood. And, man, he's stacked up inside. Absolutely impressed with just the tenacity of the Tigers defensive line and linebackers. I mean, you 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 better bring <laughs> your courage <laughs> if you're gonna try to run it against them. So Leatherwood goes out and Nico Duffy comes in. He's in the backfield. Came into this game second in the SWAC with 829 yards. So Duffy and Stafford Anderson have really carried the mail for the Braves. Second and ten. Harper with a quick pass and it's completed to Pringle. He spins down inside. Short game. He should be just shy of the first down. And again, that's that, that quick trigger, right? We talked about how quick he, he rears back. And again, they've seen they've run the slant three or four different times. And even on their other successful longer passes, they were slant patterns, but they back shouldered it. So it wound up looking like an out pattern to the outside a little bit. So it's interesting. They've seen something on the inside. And again, I I love the slants inside because it does. It shows the numbers. Your defender's usually on your backside, and your receiver can be a little more cautious about making sure if he can't catch it, he knocks it down. Ball's resting on the 34 now for third and four, and they go to St Stafford Anderson. He was stacked up, but a great second effort by Anderson, and he's going to have the first down for the Braves. That is great, great individual effort. And the, look, the offensive line gets stalemated, and actually one of the linemen are pushed back he just hits the one. He doesn't go down and just stays on his feet and drives. They come back with another quick give to Anderson inside. This time it's a shorter pickup. May have gotten about two yards on the play. So this is the deepest penetration of the day for the Braves. 
as they move down in the scoring position. This is as far as either team has gone so far the day, and we're under five minutes to go here in the first half. This is a special drive for the Braves because, I mean, they've earned every single yard and inch they've gotten on this drive. Alcorn looking at second and six. Pressure on Harper. He escapes again. Now he's going to run it. He pulls it down, and Harper steps out of bounds, and he's about a yard shy of picking up that first down. Yeah, Keontae Hampton came in early and caused a disruption, right? Made him come up into the pocket, and then he found room on that left side and just takes off, gets what he can. Just a great decision by Felix Harper, though, to pull that down. I mean, they had the pressure there. They had him locked up, but he stepped up in the pocket and bounced it back again to the outside. And he's, as I just said, he's just shy of that first down. Call it third and one for the Braves. Harper has Anderson to his left. The give is to Anderson. And Anderson's going to be very close. We'll see how they spot it. Looks like he got it, but let's see where they put it down. Well, he ran right into the back. <laughs> this lineman, if you don't move, you're going to have his face mask imprint on your backside because he just runs square. Looks like Anderson's going to be inches uh, short. So it's a fourth down coming up for um, All Corn State. Fourth down and less than a yard to pick it up. And now they're going to send out the field goal unit. They better hurry up. So they thought about it for a second, thought about going for it, but now they bring on the field goal unit. They're getting set for a 32-yard field goal. Good snap, good hole, and the kick is away. And it is good, and the Braves are on the board. So how about that? Thought about going for it on fourth and inches. Had second thoughts about it. Got the field goal unit out there, and they convert. So as we take another timeout, right after that field goal by the Braves, they're now out in front, 3-0. Just jumped out in front thanks to that 32-yard field goal by Noah Kiani for the Braves. There was an interesting situation there because they had a fourth and inches, and for a minute, it looked like they might go for it, and then Coach Fred McNair decided better of it. He said, let me put the three points on the board, and the 32-yard field goal was good. Well, when I saw that happen, they were kind of tight on time, and when they were rushing, sometimes you rush your kicker like that, and then he's not able to settle down. But 
they got on the field, they calmed themselves real quick, was able to get the kickoff and, uh, and accomplish their goal. So good job there. So Christopher Thompson kicks it off, and it goes deep, fielded at about the five, and here come the Tigers on the return, and there is a flag down. And a great return by Jackson State, Isaiah Bolden with a nice return, but there is a flag on the play. So it looks like it's going to come back. I'll tell you, you almost don't see any returns at all without flags. Nowadays. That got the reaction I thought it would get. <laughs> As we take another look, check out Bolden. He picks up some great blocking. I guess the, the tackling down there at the bottom is probably where the flag went down. But man, that brought a big play all the way back for your 23 yard line. Yeah, it wiped out something that would have put the Tigers almost at near midfield there. It was a great return. So instead, Shadour Sanders and the offense will take over after the penalty. As you see, the band getting set for the halftime extravaganza today. And with the packed house, that's going to be something special. So first and 10 for Sanders and the offense. Shadour will pass it. And he throws it into double coverage there. A couple of uh, Braves over there near the football, including number 20, Christopher Dare. He was trying to hit Rucker. The Braves are up for this game. There, I mean, it's just the intensity, and, and so, so the Tigers. I'm just, but it is just because you, the both teams are playing at a super high level. Every play is competitive, and I mean, it, it's this is a good football game. So second and ten for the Tigers. Sanders steps up in the pocket, fires near the sideline, has his man, a completed pass to Corbin the third. Keith Corbin the third, he picks up a first down for Jackson State, finally tackled around the 45. Boy, Sanders was real disciplined here. I mean, I, I thought he was kind of throwing it away at first, but he saw his man set himself up, put it right in there, nice safe throw. Got a great game. You're right, Jorge. He saw how wide open he was. He threw him a nice ball to catch, too. Didn't want to yeah. miss that completion. So 228 and counting to go here in the first half. Sanders steps up away from the pressure again. This time he's running with the football. And he steps out of bounds near the 40-yard line with another first down for the Tigers. How smooth was his acceleration there, right? I mean, it, it, you know he's running fast, but it didn't look like he actually did this. But you just see him pulling away. And that last little step there just to get out of bounds and get a little couple extra yards. Did a great job. Yeah. He did a great job. You know, I don't like to do comparisons, but on that run, since you mentioned it, it looked like he wasn't moving. It reminded me of Vince Young a little bit because Vince always used to look like he wasn't really moving, and then he'd be 30 yards down the field. Yeah. So. You, you could tell how fast he was running by people he was running by. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much how it is. Shadour Sanders, who grew up near Dallas in Canton, Texas, went to Trinity Christian High School. Goes back to pass on first down, rolls to his right, in trouble, spins away from one, comes back to Pickett. Pickett is trying to escape, and he can't get away as he's forced out of bounds. A nice play there by Claudin Cherrylus to get him out of bounds, but a good job by Sanders to keep the play alive. Yeah, but I think they lost it. They were so far back, they probably still lost yards there. Can't see the marker at this point, but look how far back he was from the actual line of scrimmage. That's a. Uh, much just should have thrown out of bounds and just live another day. So 135 to go here in the first half. All corn state out in front, three nothing, virtue of a 32 yard field goal. So Sanders on second and 16 after that play. Fires has his man and a nice catch and a good move by number five Shane Hooks. And Hooks picked up the first down after that great move. Hooks did a phenomenal job there. I mean, not only just a good little shake and bake move. Watch this right here. That move right there turns inside, and then he's going to drive, pile drive the guy coming at him. Right? So, I mean, he showed some movement, and he showed some power all in the same, same uh, play. 
We have a timeout on the field, and so thanks to that first down catch by Shane Hooks, we're going to take a break. Coach Prime and the Tigers are on the move. We'll be back. Last drive of the day in progress. As Shadour Sanders has them down to the 28-yard line. And looking for more first and 10 for JSU. Sanders is going to pass. Has some time. Pumps. Throws underneath. Has Pickett. Pickett spins, and he's pulled down at about the 20-yard line. So a good pass, good safe pass underneath as they move the football forward. Well, that little juke may have opened him up right there. You have defenders move. And then he just kind of tucks right in the middle there. Second and one coming up for Jackson State. Sanders looking to pass. Goes underneath. Has his man, Josh Lanier. Lanier has a first down as he's finally tackled down at the 10-yard line. And again, you know, I mentioned off the top that both these quarterbacks are very careful with the ball. They don't turn the ball over. They know how important every drive is, so you, you, you're trusting your quarterback to make good decisions on these passes. Tigers are going quickly. We're down to the final 30 seconds of the half. First and goal as Shadour Sanders breaks out of the pocket. Has some running room out in front of him, and he does a great job of getting out of bounds. That space he had closed down in a hurry. Yeah, I thought I thought if, if he would have committed a little bit earlier, he could have gotten more out of it. But man, I'll tell you what, they it looked like a lot more real quick, but uh, it was shut down real fast. Demetrius Hicks did a good job of escorting him out of bounds there. Yeah, Hicks did. Well, once Hicks made the commitment to get off of his defender, he went right at him. So second and goal coming up for JSU with 19 ticks to go here in the first half. Sanders under pressure, and he fires into the end zone, and it's incomplete. It was almost picked off by Christopher Dare. Man, he got his hands on it. Whew. You know, we talked about him being safe with the ball. That was not a justified throw right there. I mean, it was right in the, in the stomach. He was trying to hit Kylan Ritchie. 
over the middle there, and Dare did a good job of getting his hands on the football. Now again, here you got to go. You, you go in the end zone again. You take a shot in there, see what you can come up with, and if not, then you settle for your field goal. And you see Shadur Sanders coming over to the sideline, and they're going to discuss what they're going to do on third and goal with 13 seconds to go here in the first half. And I, th I think you're going to see, and again, those those back posts uh, passes there. It's a safe pattern. Sanders does a nice job of lofting the ball up and kind of driving it in. I think you're going to see him do a timing pattern to just send someone in that the, the flag or a post. I, I would say flag. They're going to run to that outside corner in that in that corner of the each end zone and just pick one and go. They're going to look at the matchup because because Coach Brown's talked about it over and over. What he's proud about the way what Sanders does is reads the defense really well and, and knows what's coming so he can make a good decision. So. Well, th this has been like a Mike Tyson versus Holyfield slugfest here in the first half. So, you know, Coach Sanders would love nothing better than to punch this one in for a touchdown. We have 13 seconds left. Alcorn State out in front, 3 nothing, and a big play for the JSU Tigers. In the backfield, Peyton Pickett to Sanders right. As they get set to snap the football, Pickett wants to make sure he's got the right play. Sanders has been under some pressure today. So third and goal. Pressure is coming, passes into the end zone, and it might have, it was dropped. It looked like Shane Hooks had a chance to make the catch, but he could not hang on. Yeah, I said they would look towards that outside. Instead, they turn it inside. It looked like he had a chance, but it was tipped. I think it was tipped before it got to him. Yeah, Demetrius Hicks may have gotten his finger on that ball. So that'll bring up fourth down for JSU. And they're going to come to the sidelines and talk about this again. That's an interesting call. Do you think they would go for it with seven seconds to go? I'll tell you, he said it looks like he's sending the offense right back out there. I, I think you kick the field goal and you, you go tied. Uh, but I guess this is like uh, we won the East. <laughs> We're going to handle our business. And. <laughs> you got four downs to stop us. Hey, this is the play of the first half. Pickett comes off. You see him and Kylan Ritchie going back in the big tight end. But Shadur Sanders is still on the field. Fourth down and goal to go for the Tigers. Well, let me tell you, that Braves defense has played a really heck of a game here. And they're going to have to have one big stand right here. Ball is resting around the three-yard line. And now there's another timeout on the field. Yeah, I think the Braves said, all right, let's talk about it ourselves if they're going to go for it. The, the chess match of, of football is going full full speed right there. You mentioned that. We talked about it on the top. Alcorn State comes into the ball game. Six and four, five and two in swag play. Six and four overall. Jackson State nine and one, seven and oh in swag play. So Jackson State with a win today, they would host the swag championship game. There's a bunch of tiebreakers at play, but if they won, they would host it outright. On the other side, Alcorn State's in a different situation. They have to win today. Not only do they have to win, they have to hope that Prairie View would lose next week when they take on Mississippi Valley State. Yeah, correct. And again, but all you can handle is what you need to do, yeah. right? And I think you can see from the intensity of how the Braves are playing. It's like, look, we're gonna, we need to handle our business. We can't worry about what, what Prairie View A&M is going to do. We need to handle our business. Then we can cheer, right? Then we can worry about that. But if you don't, we don't take care of our business, none of it matters. And, that's, and, and they've certainly come in here with great focus. Huge, huge play here because nothing has been given in this game. What a big gamble now for Jackson State. The Tigers, fourth and goal to go from the three. Sanders fires into the end zone, and it's a touchdown to Keith Corbin, the third. And he was wide open on the play. Let me tell you, that's one of those things where you know you have a play that's going to work, right? You know what play you're going to call. You know exactly. You practice it. And you line up, and you're like, we got this. And they did. Execution was great. And I was shocked how wide open he was. Well, that's just great play call. It just so well done. No time left on the clock. So as he caught the touchdown pass, we ran out of time in the first half. So you talk about being a riverboat gambler or whatever you want to call it. He rolled the dice and they came up 
whatever you needed to That's win. Cold <laughs> lettuce. <Yes. laughs> so the extra point is up, and it is good. And just like that, with no time left, Sanders to Keith Corbin the third for the touchdown. Look at that. And again, he, a catchable ball, right? He doesn't drill it at him. He makes sure he throws it soft, gets it right to him. He knows it's open. Huge, huge, cold-blooded play. <laughs> Sanders, the, uh, the, uh, Corbin, the transfer from U of H has been one of his top targets of late. And there must have been some type of rub they ran on that play. As you see Coach Deion Sanders on the sideline. If we can take another look at it. And they did put eight ticks back on the clock. So the officials did get that situation uh, sorted out. Because it looked like the clock ticked out after the touchdown. But apparently there were eight seconds left in the first half. Seems like a lot of time left, but hey, you got 60,000 plus in the house. You get a little excited. That's and you, right. you, <laughs> you give them all the plays you can handle. You may have punched the wrong button there. You never know. Hey. Bailey Rayburn on to kick it off now with eight seconds to go. And, and uh, again, I've, I've said it over and over the way this game has gone. You have to earn everything, and, and both teams have earned that seven and earned that three, respectively. And defense has just been phenomenal today. It's been a slugfest, but it's been an exciting slugfest. I mean, it really has. They look like two of the best teams in the swag for the way they're playing today. So Rayburn puts it on the ground. It's going to be picked up by the Braves, just shy of the 20. On the return, that is number six, Akeem McNair, the coach's son. Fred McNair's son brings it back. But we still have three seconds left on the clock. So as it may have run out on your screen, they, there you see they put the three seconds back. So we'll see what the Braves do as they send out Felix Harper for the final three seconds. Do you just take a knee here and go in and let's work this out in the second half? I think you do, but I mean, I thought I would have kicked a field goal a minute ago <laughs> too, so it'd be a tie of three to three. So uh, you know what? In this kind of game, maybe you just let it all hang out and just give yourself one big shot. Well, no victory formation here. They got the wide receivers spread out. So with three seconds to go, the Braves will snap it, and they give it inside to Anderson. And Anderson rips off a big one, and Anderson takes it all the way out to midfield, you know. And Jorge, he was one tackle shot of taking that all the way. But as we go to the half, Coach Prime and the Jackson State Tigers are out in front. 7-3, we'll be back with the halftime report in just a minute.
representative Tarkina Armstrong. You are the director of diversity, marketing, and development. Why is it so important for you guys to be involved with the swag? Well, the swag exemplifies, you know, what GM is striving to do with diversity and inclusion. You know, our goal with this relationship is trying to ensure that we build a relationship with the 12 swag schools and its community. I'm really proud that GM is using this relationship to really give to the schools. Our relationship has the ability to give scholarships direct to these student athletes so that they can excel. You know, what's most important is that we just are not sponsoring football. It's going beyond this, and it's all sports. So from women's basketball to esports and gaming. So we're really proud of that. All right, and I know you said building relationships is one of the things you want to do. What are some other goals? You know, one of the most important goals is GM has the aspiration to be the most inclusive company in the world. And we want to build a pipeline. So we want to use this relationship to have students come into our organization as interns for full-time opportunities. You know, when you think about what the SWAC is doing from STEM and engineering to marketing, it's dynamic, and we want to be a part of that. GM definitely wants to be a part of, you know, organization and, you know, this great college that has the ability to foster that talent within. All right, are you enjoying the game so far? This, the energy in this stadium is beyond anything I've ever expected, so it is an honor to be here. All right. And we are here at the Masters Memorial Stadium. Tigers lead 7-3 in the half. We'll have more after this. My new normal? Fewer asthma attacks with Nucala. A once monthly add-on injection for severe eosinophilic asthma. Nucala reduces eosinophils, a key cause of severe asthma. Nucala is not for sudden breathing problems. Allergic reactions can occur. Get help right away for swelling of face, mouth, tongue, or trouble breathing. Infections that can cause shingles have occurred. Don't stop steroids unless told by your doctor. Tell your doctor.
My apologies, everyone. That was the sounds of Dynamite Band, of course, from Alcorn State. And what a performance they had. Jackson State waiting to come up next. But we're going to pause for a timeout now and take a break with the score 7 3. Jackson State out in front of Alcorn. Welcome back to Veterans Memorial Stadium. It's a 7-3 game at the half. The Tigers from Jackson State out in front. Let's check out some other action from around the SWAC this afternoon because it was a busy afternoon of action. As you can see, our scores presented today by USAA, Texas, uh, Texas A&M, rolling over Prairie View there, 52-3. In other action, Alabama A&M topping Arkansas Pine Bluff 35-17, Alabama State 7-0 over Texas Southern. They're in the first and then yet to get underway, Bethune-Cookman at Florida A&M. So that takes us to the standings, and you can see exactly where we are as we check out the SWAC standings brought to you by the Home Depot. Jackson State is already clinched in the east. Prairie View and Alcorn, that's a different story right there, Jorge. And it doesn't matter that Prairie View lost to Texas A&M. That's not a conference game. They will play Mississippi Valley State next week. That is the big game. So let's go down to the field now to the sonic boom of the South from Jackson State and check out a little bit of their performance.
Switch your business to the power of Verizon 5G. We are still at the half with Jackson State out in front of Alcorn State. 7-3, it was a defensive struggle throughout the first half, but Jackson State actually went on a drive late in the first half. Let's take a look at some of the action from the first half, see how all this happened. Felix Harper in trouble, and he spun down and sacked by James Houston, who's the sack leader in the SWAC with the fine play. And then check out Warren Newman as he scoops up the punt. Picks up a couple of nice blocks, but then watch Warren Newman as he cuts it back up field for a great gain to set the Tigers up in good field position. And then check out Harper with the touch on this pass. Lobs it over to Juan Anthony Jr. He makes a great catch. That got a big first down, got him out of a huge hole. And then Shadur Sanders tries to scramble away, but he is sacked by Harrington there in the backfield. So the defensive struggle went back and forth, back and forth until finally, it was Kiani coming on to for the field goal and then that late touchdown pass from Sanders to Corbin right there is what put Jackson State 
out in front in this one. The field goal by Noah Kiani was 32 yards. That brings us to where we are, a 7-3 game as we get set to start the third quarter. Let's take a look at some of the halftime stats brought to you by Cricket. As you can see, man, this is an even ball game. As you go down, you look at the rushing yardage, you look at the passing yardage, and even the total yardage, not that far off. And as you see, uh, it's a time of possession, 15 minutes, almost 16 minutes for Alcorn. And you look on the other side, Jackson State right back. They're pretty close to 14 minutes. And it kind of shows you just exactly how close of a first half it was. And then the biggest play of the first half, though, came in the final seconds of the half when Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, decided to roll the dice he had a fourth and goal to go from the three-yard line. He decided to go for it. They got the touchdown on the play. It went to Keith Corbin, the third. He caught it. That takes us to where we are. It puts Jackson State out in front, 7-3, to three, in front of a packed house. We're not sure whether or not they set the record for this ball game. The record was actually set back in 1996 62,512 they packed into Veterans Memorial Stadium they were trying to upset that record today break that record if they could and and we haven't gotten the official word yet but when you look around this stadium you got to think like man they probably set that record yeah I'll tell you what it, it's, it's if it's not a record <laughs> it's really really close and the one thing for sure it's a great great atmosphere for some football today. Oh, no doubt about it. Let's check out our SWAC upcoming games brought to you by Pepsi Zero Sugar. And as you see, the Turkey Gate Turkey Day game coming up on Thanksgiving Day is Tuskegee <laughs> taking on Alabama State. You and I will get the call for that one. And then that's on Thursday. Then on Saturday, a key ball game, especially if Alcorn State wins today, Mississippi Valley at Prairie View. They will be hoping that Prairie View stumbles a little bit in that game. We will also be there. And then how about the Bayou Classic? It's always a classic. The Southern <laughs> Jaguars taking on Grambling State. Yeah, that, that takes over New Orleans is what that does. That's a, that's a city party and one heck of a football game. Yeah, if you've ever been down there for the Bayou Classic, you know it's like yes. Mardi Gras. I mean, the last one I went to, it was incredible. It yeah. was absolutely yeah. incredible. It's like the, the party moved from the, the French Quarter out to the – to the, to the Super it Caesars right Dome down, a, a yeah, atmosphere. Right. So. Yeah, you can go right down Canal, and it's on all the way from the Dome with Poydras all the way in. I mean, it's just one big party. See uh, Coach Prime coming out with his security contingent there. And uh, what do you think about that call? Going for it on fourth down and goal to go from the three-yard line. I mean, that, that's some stones. I mean, quite frankly, I mean, it's just uh, <laughs> the polite way to call that. I mean, you know, I mean, you could have easily just gotten your field goal unit out there and taken three and you're, you're tied. Uh, but again, that, that, that I give that credit to, you know, the offense, uh, T.C. Taylor, the offense coordinator, saying, hey, coach, I got to play. Because, you know, how it happens is Coach Prime says, hey, we, do we got this or not? What, what do you want to call? And they say, well, yeah, I think I think it's what we run. Are you confident in it? Yes, I am. Okay, let's go. I mean, that's, it's not just a, hey, I want to go for it. You got to be knowing you, you, you have a play that you want to do it. You got athletes that are that are that have shown that they're doing you know doing the right things, and then you say all right because just to, everyone thinks you know oh the call it, it's always looks glamorous to make these calls we're going for it on fourth down we're going for it here we're going for it you wind up just silly if you're going for everything without knowing what you're doing and they obviously had a plan and then executed perfectly. They sure did. As we look at some more of the stats from the half, from the first half, Shadur Sanders, 13 to 17 for 109 yards and the touchdown there during the final seconds. So he had a first half. And then you go to the other side. You look at Felix Harper, 7 of 10 for 87 yards. He was sacked twice in the first half. And Shadur Sanders was sacked once. Yeah, and, and the defensive intensity has just been spectacular the entire game. You know, I mentioned it over and over if you're just joining us. I mean, every single yard has been earned. <laughs> I mean, you paid in blood, you paid in price. Uh, again, it was, it, it's, it's been a, a war in the trenches. And again, defensively, both defensive lines have been very, very aggressive and, and, and standing tall. Those offensive lines have had to just battle for every inch they can get. And I think it shows on, on the total yards here, you got Alcorn, with 133, and you have uh, Jackson State with 139. 
We are set to get underway in the third quarter, and here we are as the kickoff sails down to about the four-yard line. And the Tigers bring it back on the return, and he's going to be knocked down at about the 22-yard line. Looks like it was Isaiah Bolden again on the return for Jackson State. So they will get a chance to go right on offense after taking some of that momentum to the locker room after scoring that touchdown in the final seconds of the first half. Yeah, well, Bolden on that play right there, he kind of cut off that inside foot, and then when it slipped, he had nowhere to go with ball. And, uh, he was mad at himself because he felt there was a seam right to the left right when he was trying to plant and just fell, and that, that, that uh, return could have been bigger. But, yeah, you know, the, the Tigers have momentum now, but, but I'll tell you, that Braves defense played one whale of a first half. Can they keep their intensity up, and did they see something at halftime? be able to take advantage. Shadur Sanders set to start the third quarter with J.D. Martin in the backfield. And he turns and he hands to Martin who has some room inside. And J.D. Martin's going to pick up about seven yards on that carry. That's the easiest yards of the game right there. That's the easiest yards. I mean, everything else has been bad, especially a running. You've had people bomb, pounding through and all that. That, that was the, the biggest gap we've seen all game long. So second and two, give him eight on the carry. This time, the defense rises to the occasion quickly. Number 51, Harrington, is there to push him back in the backfield. Yeah, that's more of the norm of what we've seen this entire game. You get the ball, there's going to be uh, the other colored jersey right on your tail as soon as you get it. And again, look at the penetration. And again, they are just on top of it. So Harrington is there with Tariq Martin. And we have movement on the offensive line. We saw this a couple of times in the first half, and here we go again in the second half. And again, you know, sometimes the, the quarterback may try to do something to get the guy to jump, but you're so, you know how hard they're coming at you, you just get ready for it, and you you make that move, and you lose your concentration on what the snap count is. And again, that's just staying in the moment, not getting too far ahead of yourself. The left guard, Dimitri Jordan, actually moved a little early on that one, so. That will back them up five as the Tigers now are going to pass. Shadur Sanders from a perfect pocket over the middle, and his man was well covered. He was trying to squeeze it in to Keith Corbin there, but a good defensive play by the Braves. Yeah, it looks like Corbin played defense on this one because the ball was a little off target. And watch him. He kind of went down, it looks like, to me to knock the ball down because he knew he couldn't catch it. So good defense by the Braves. So we're kind of picking up right where we left off. So now that was third down. It's an incompleted pass. So the Tigers will have to punt the football away. That will bring on Lane McGregor. Takes his time. Gets a low line drive kick. And it's going to be picked up and returned. It's a short return on the play by Number three, that is C.J. Bowler on the return. So that is where the Braves will go on offense. So the Braves defense technically did their job. Oh, I mean, uh, Jackson State scored right before the half, so you want to come out, shut them down, do not let them go on a long drive, turn the ball back over to your offense. Yeah, and again, you, you, you pointed out a minute ago, it looks like right where we took off from the halftime, defense is playing really, really strong. Offense is having a hard time getting their full momentum and getting rolling. And... Um, you know, defenses rule the day, right? And they, now it's time for the Tigers defense to go ahead and dominate like they were earlier. And, and, and again, what did the Braves see at halftime? Did they find something that they can do? They, they've had that slant pattern work, and we'll see where they go with it. We got movement up front again, and the flags go down, and the Jackson State Tigers are pointing at the Braves. Ball start. Offense. Offense. Number yeah, we had a, a rash starting exactly like the first quarter. We had a rash of penalties uh, in the first uh, couple drives. And then after that, things cleaned up. And the game just got really intense and stayed there. <laughs> Don't you think a lot of it has to do with having such a lively atmosphere oh, with yeah. so many people in the seats? You know, you, you just move a little earlier. Sometimes you just don't hear what you need to hear. So this time he gives to Duffy. And Duffy's not going to get much at all. Number 40 at the bottom of that pile was Keontae Hampton, a young man who came into this game with 66 tackles 
and two sacks on the year for Jackson State. I'm telling you, the linebackers from Jackson State, whether it's Keontae Hampton or Aubrey Miller Jr., those guys are just wrecking crews by themselves, I'm telling you. And that's a great story there because James Houston, their best pass rusher, a young man who has 13 and a half sacks, wanted to play linebacker here. <laughs> <laughs> that's so on second and 15, Harper completes this pass to Juan Anthony. That's going to be about five. So it's going to be a big third down coming up for the Braves. And Houston, Houston certainly gets it done for himself. And you're right. He tells Coach, I'm a linebacker. Coach let him play a linebacker a little bit and said, okay, you're not starting over Miller and Hampton. Do you want to play football? So why don't you line up here at defensive end? And I'll be darned if this guy just hasn't had a knack to find his way to the quarterback. And he's got great moves coming inside. So. Yeah, he's turned into one of the best pass rushers in the country. Yeah, and he may find himself with, with a career in this thing if he keeps listening to Coach Prime, because I know, <laughs> I'll tell you, that's what I would do, listen to him. Look, look, look how tight the corners come up. All right, and that's what, that's what Coach Prime demands of their corners. So Harper on third and 10, throws it underneath, ball is popped up and intercepted. Shiloh Sanders comes up with the interception. Dion's other one of the other Sanders sons on the team. Shiloh Sanders off the ricochet picks off the interception. He had a big interception last week when they clinched the title against Southern. I'll tell you, he, he, he doesn't steal it, right? That confidence. And again, coming up there and getting that ball is a big, big moment. And again, the one thing we haven't seen from the defenses today was what? Turnovers. None of them, right? But great intensity, hard play. And when you get one of those like that, that's that's what you're looking for. You know, it's the first turnover of the game. We had a fumble in the first half by Harper, but an offensive lineman recovered it. Yep. And now, so the first really big break of the game goes to Jackson State with 12.04 to go here in the third quarter. And did they go deep? And we have another whistle again before they can get the snap off. And it's illegal procedure again against the Jackson State offense. Yeah, you can see there was some kind of, it, it didn't look like a true jump. It looked like he had a couple of guys rocking back and forth. And that, that's just not, I mean, you've got to keep your head on at this point. And there was Shiloh on the sidelines. Getting some pats on the backs there from his teammates. I mentioned he had the interception late in the ball game against Southern last week that clinched the Eastern Division Championship. And once again, we have movement on the line. And, I, you know, I just tend to think that it must be how loud the stadium is today. And, and we talked about that, how Jackson State averages about 36. There's over 60 in this house today. Yeah, there, there, there's no question, but I mean, at some point that 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 roar, that cloud, kind of just gets numb for you, right? You feel the energy. There's no question. There's tons of energy there, but you have to dial in on what you're doing. And again, I, I think yeah, that has something to do with it. But I'm telling you, these defensive linemen are coming at them so strong. They're just trying to get a jump on that on that snap, and they're jumping too early. First and 15, and the pass from Sanders is complete down the sidelines, and that's how you pick up that big gain. And guess who? It's Keith Corbin the third again. Boy, what a good catch and good throw. Again, he threw off his back foot. He was still backing up. But again, he used Corbin's got a big body in there. And what he did is he shielded the defender from the ball as he was going up for the catch. Big first down for the Tigers. They come back, try to run it, give it to Pickett, and Pickett has nowhere to go. He is caught and yanked down in the backfield. Number 21, Jawan Taylor, just one of the Braves there I'll to make you, that stop. Uh, he, he's third in tackles for a reason. He knows where the ball is going and he gets there. And again, tackling today has been absolutely spectacular. No one has broken through a tackle on either side. And, and again, when you swarm like that for tackling, you get three, four guys back there, there's nowhere to go. Pickett thought he would try to do something. Instead, went backwards, lost six yards on the play. Taylor, who transferred from Northeast Mississippi Community College. They move him all over the place. They try to put him in the best situation to make a play, and he did right there. So a loss of six. Sanders this time rolling to his right, directing traffic. Throws down the sidelines, and he just threw that one away. The nearest receiver was Shane Hooks. But Sanders just unloaded that football. Sanders had 15 yards if he would have just taken a nice little jog in the park on that one. And I know when he looks back at that one, he's going to... His dad's going to look at him and say, son, 
Why don't you just take the 10 yards, take a knee, and then let's move on. There was a penalty anyway. So, so yeah, there was, a bit, there was another flag down. And they're going to have the mark off here, and it looks like we're going to redo second down. So second and 26, man. I mean, you just can't, you can't have negative plays like this. We keep talking about how important each yard is and how you're having to battle these defenses for them. Uh, there's only been a few, and that, that last pass by Sanders was the biggest play of the game that I can recall. You, you, every yard is precious. You can't go backwards. So penalties have been huge on this drive. Last time it was uh, third and 15, and Sanders recouped. This time it's second and 26, and another whistle again. And so something's going on. I, I don't know if they need a silent uh, snap count or something's happening down there, but it's another offense. Number 51. The only time I've seen something like this. Another illegal procedure penalty. Yeah, the only time I've seen something like this is either the defense makes these little sounds that are similar to a call that draws them off and the refs don't notice. But that's not the case here because usually you'd see offensive linemen go up to them and yell them and saying, hey, here's what they're doing. This is why we're jumping. And there's none of that. This is just, this is like concentration issues. You, you've got to pull yourself together. I mean, second and 31. It's, it's a little bit to go here. As you can see, they're looking to the sideline, and there's something going on with the communication that they'll have to get straight. So Sanders will put it up. The secondary goes way back. This time, he's going to run with it. Has a lot of room in front of him, and Shadur Sanders picked up a lot of that penalty yardage back. Yeah, you want him on this slide. He should have slid just a little bit earlier. That could have been dangerous for him, or just cut it up away from him. And like right here, he should have just gone give himself up he just almost got de decapitated <laughs> good decision though with 10 minutes to go here in the third because they were backed way up and now you put yourself in almost a manageable situation here as they come up for third down and long it looks like it's third and about 12 to go for the first down Shiloh Sanders good protection fires low and he has a man who went down to make the catch that is Rucker, Chavante Rucker, and he says he's got the first down. Yes, sir, it's a first down for the Tigers. Excellent job. You go just right past the sticks, little hook pattern. He buttons it right up there, catches the ball. Again, Sanders a little bit low, but he was probably just trying to make sure it was safe away from the defender. But it was the run by Sanders that made all this possible because he knew it was third and forever, it was second and forever, but he got a big chunk of it, and he made that third down more manageable so a big first down for the Tigers as they overcome two massive penalties and there's movement again up front and here come the whistles I think that was on the defense right it looked there. like the defense jumped but they're pointing toward the Tigers if that is that the fourth on this drive against Jackson State if that's the case I thought the nose guard jumped first on defense Ah, they're calling it on offense. Yep. Wow. Ball start. Offense. Number 72. Five yard penalty. First down. You know, the other side of this that may be happening, it gets a little disheartening for the defense. When you have them in second and long, third and long, all these situations constantly, and they come back and get the first down every time. Yeah, and it, it ruins just confidence, but your own intensity, right? The thing that we talked about this game the intensity on both sides of the defense has been absolutely spectacular and uh and and, and it oh their intensity is <laughs> fine right there my friend yeah that's picking <laughs> trying to find a hole and it just was not an opening anywhere in that line as he is hit hard there a big stop by devin dawson yeah, on defense for the braves and juan taylor was right there with him too man i'm telling you I don't know how Taylor just seems to be everywhere, no matter where it is. But You know, they do move him around and try to get him in the best position to make a play. So they might have been a yard on that play. We got second and 14 coming up for the Tigers. Shadur Sanders fires low to the outside, and it's going to be an incompleted pass. He had Warren Newman wide open right there. Went to Corbin, and again, you know, he's got a lot of confidence in Corbin, but Newman was just 
wide open in the slot. Can't see it from that angle, but I'm telling you, he, he, he's going to kick himself when he looked at that one. He's like <laughs> so now a third and 14, which third and long has been nothing on this drive. I mean, the uh, Tigers have had a lot of success in this situation, but can they keep it going? So Shadur Sanders will operate in an empty backfield. Has three wide outs to his right, two to his left. Has some time. Fires for the end zone, and it's almost caught but dropped in the end zone. A good attempt to a la Brown. He couldn't quite hang on. The ball was low, and it's an incompleted pass. I like the play call. I'm telling you, right down the middle, just could not. Could not connect, but it was close. So the Tigers will go for the field goal. It's going to be a 41-yard field goal. Bailey Rayborn is on to try and make it. This year he's 0-4 in field goals. We'll see if he can put this one in from 41 yards. And the kick from Rayborn is up, and it is good. So Bailey Rayborn, the transfer from McNeese State, drilled it right there, drilling it from 41 yards as the JSU Tigers attack on three more. They Welcome back, everyone. Jackson State now with a 10-7 lead after an eight-play drive that took three minutes and 45 seconds before Bailey Rayburn drilled a 41-yard or so. Jackson State tacking on three more as they now lead it 10-3 over Alcorn. Yes, that interception turns into three points, and that's what you want. When you get an interception, you get a turnover. You want something out of it. Obviously, you'd love to get seven, but they get three. So the kickoff sails into the end zone. And the Braves will bring it out. Start first and 10 from the 25. And check out the penalties for today. You see Alcorn just three penalties for 14 yards. On the other side, 11 penalties for Jackson State for 95 yards. But the Tigers are still out front. Yeah, and I think five of those, at least five or six, the, on the one drive was four, was just a uh, 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 legal procedure or offsides. I mean, so you, you, you've got to clean that up. 
there's probably six or seven maybe on the day, wouldn't you say? So seven of the 11. <laughs> but how many times do you see the team with the 11 penalties compared to the three penalties actually be out in front? Right, well, I mean, how many times yeah. do you see third down and 20 conversions? Not a lot, and they've done that, and that's what's allowed them to do it. So 8-18 to go here in the third. Felix Harper back at quarterback, completes his pass to Bowler, and he slides down after a short pickup there. You know, coming into this ball game, Jackson State moved into both top 20 polls they were number 17 in the FCS coaches poll and number 19 in the stats performance FCS poll so you see the Tigers moving up inside the top 20 in both polls swag certainly getting respect and they deserve respect and you know I think they should be higher quite frankly but so second down and Anderson rips off a big run he has the first down and more as he picks up about 13 on that play Stafford Anderson. Oh, just watch him and look at the battles inside. As you see him running by, you see the absolute just battles inside that offensive line. And sometimes, you know. And the pass from Felix Harper is complete, and it's a foot race, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. It is Jeremiah Green. We do have a flag down, but it was way after the fact. But how about Felix Harper? finding number 84 Jeremiah Green and just like that the quick strike Braves are back in this ball game yeah I was speechless when I saw it I had to stop for Butch and I was like wow and quick strike I I'm wondering if this is going to be unsportsmanlike conduct I mean you got to let the guy celebrate just a little bit when he gets that touchdown that was a huge play in this game Let's see what they're going to come up with here Let's take another look. Harper tossing a beautiful pass. Oh, so the throw down there is the is the unnecessary roughness. As we get ready for the extra point. That was actually Montario Hunt. The wide receiver who hauled that one in 50 yards for the Braves. Montario Hunt. And we are tied at 10.
That last touchdown drive for Alcorn State, three plays, 75 yards in just 56 seconds. Felix Harper to Monterio Hunt, 50 yards for the touchdown. I tell you, this has been, a, it's an even game on the scoreboard, an even game on total yards as well. Alcorn, 213 yards and 33 plays. Jackson State, 38 plays for 201 yards. That's about as even as it gets. Uh, you know, deep into your third quarter of a football game. It's, given, it's been a battle. Nothing's been a give me, although that was certainly the biggest play of the game. And it was just an absolute, a great execution, great pass. It wasn't like the defense wasn't covering well. Great execution, got them to score. So the Braves kick it off. And it goes out of bounds, so that will be a penalty flag. And Jackson State will start in excellent field position. You know, uh, talking to the Tigers, they talked about how Montario Hunt had been improving each week, how he had been getting better and better and better. And uh, we're seeing some of that today. Yeah, when you get one catch and it's 50-yard yeah. touchdown, that's all you Kicking need, right? <laughs> Kicking team. <laughs> That'll get you right in a hurry. The ball will be placed <laughs> at the 35-yard oh, line. Exactly, but how First about down. Felix Harper? So cool. He's been under duress the entire day. But he showed what he could do when he has a little time to check out what's going on in the secondary. Well, they've been doing a really good job with a lot of slants, right? Which is giving a little timing pattern underneath. Uh, had some you know, some brave receivers, Corbin being one of them. Uh, uh, excuse me, not Corbin. Um, what's his name? Uh, Bolton. Uh, Bowler, excuse me, who, who's been tough from inside. And so, uh, you know, now they, they hit one outside. They haven't really gone outside a whole lot. And so that play just popped it. And, and again, now you're tied up. The defense is what defense can can uh, can get back to that aggressive status and, and making them earn every yard now. You see the officials having a word down on the field. Trying to sort this last one out. It looked like the, the football just went out of bounds, but obviously there's a little more to it than that. As Coach Prime. You know, he's got a prime seat for this one. I mean, that's, and I was watching him wheel up and down the sidelines. He's got a little motorized uh, wheelchair there. Oh, yeah. And he's pretty good at handling that thing. I, I'm sure he did a little practicing, but he, he's pretty good at that. From the 50-yard line, the ball we placed at the 22-and-a-half-yard line, first down. So after all that's said and done, I'm not sure they had an unsportsmanlike conduct after the ball. So now at the 22. And yeah, it's placed at the 22 after all of that. First and 10 for the Tigers and Shador Sanders. That's an interesting call. All right. Who went eight plays last time after the turnover and got a field goal. Sanders on the pitch to start the drive. And a big hit in the backfield. That is Martin on the carry. And he is stopped by... Macarius Blunt. Macarius Blunt with a big defensive play. Wow. What a shot there. And again, he had, you know, uh, offensively, he had big number 74, Tony Gray, kind of leading that around the edge. But you, he's got to stop and take that, that first man coming through. And he kind of ran by him and allowed, uh, Blunt. allowed Blunt to just a blunt blow. <laughs> <laughs> but when you see something like that, a lot of that's made in the film room because he read his key there and he was in the backfield so quickly on that play. Yeah. So second and 13 after the loss of three, Sanders dances away from one would-be tackler and throws it away down the sidelines. But the Braves had a lot of pressure on Shadur Sanders that time. Yeah, did he get outside the tackle box? I think is probably the question here. He did a good job of throwing that away. Did he get enough outside? To me, it was pretty close. But it doesn't look like there's no flag. So uh, they've done a really good job on long third downs here in this in the second half. So it doesn't scare them. Let's see what they come up with. We've seen them convert several times here in the third quarter. This is a big one. Third and 13 for the Tigers. Sanders dumps off the screen pass to Martin. Martin tries to squeeze through, but he has stopped. Jacorian Wren and company on the tackle. That, that touchdown the Braves just scored lit a fire again back underneath the Braves defense. You can see their intensity levels back to where it was at the beginning of the game. 
Christopher Dare also helping out on that tackle. But Jacorian Wren has played quite a ball game so far. So we'll get another look now at Lane McGregor, the punter on fourth and five for the Tigers. And he hasn't had a whole lot of distance here, and they sure would like him to get, get something long and deep here on this one. He gets the kick away. It's a good one this time. It is fair caught by Bowler, but he loses the football, and he wisely got on top of it. C.J. Bowler almost lost that one, but he made a good job recovering. We're tied at 10 in the third quarter. We'll be right back. We are back, and the Braves are set to go on offense with 5.43 to go here in the third. Last time they had the ball, that man, Felix Harper, tossed a 50-yard TD pass. So he is back, puts a man in motion, hands inside. Anderson fighting his way for two, maybe three yards. But that was all on Anderson by effort there. He's been special with the ball, quite frankly. I mean, I don't know if special is a word, but just a hammer. I mean, he just he fights for every little inch and yard. And again, there's not a whole lot of room in there. And every time he's, he's got an opportunity, he's done what, the best that you can do with that, that carry. Yeah, we did we did their game a couple of weeks ago, and he really ran the ball well. I mean, as you, we haven't seen a lot of Nico Duffy today. And that tells you how well Anderson has been playing. So Harper rolling to his left, completes it to Pringle. And it depends on where they put it down. He might have been just a tad short of that first down. Yes, he will be short, about a yard shy of the first down. Yeah, it's, it's Anderson time, <laughs> a yard short, right? And I think you mentioned Anderson's running a lot more today. I think it's the kind of game the coaches realize, the kind of game it is. This is the game he's got to run more. And he's been very effective. He, despite how hard yards are, he's averaging 6.8 a carry, 10 attempts, 68 yards. Third and one, and it's Anderson going forward, and he's going to be very close. Got it. it looked like he did pick it up, but it was just that last little effort right at the end. They haven't moved the sticks yet. They're going to take a look the long way across. And we have an injured player on the field. And it's one of the uh, Braves. He's like, I'm getting off here myself. Looks like his right ankle. Yeah, I couldn't catch the number. I think it was 57. Cody Travis, number 57. I think that's who that was. But 
Couldn't be sure the weather sunlight yeah. was hitting that kind of hard to tell. Well, it's always good news when you can get off the field on your own power, and that's what he did there. And where they put the football down, he's going to be a little short. Wow. So, no, now it is a first down. It is a first down. Okay. Yeah, there, there is the marking there on the field. So it's a first down for the Braves that they could set to continue the drive. Let's say I thought he had it by a yard. I'm not sure what the delay here now is. Officials want to take another look at it, review the play, make sure they have the spot correct on the play. It was ruled a first down on the field, so they're going to double check that call. Now, is this an official look or a coach look? Coach has asked for this one. Yeah. This is you know, this is necessary the, here. And he, it was a quick look. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't very long <laughs> at all. So that's uh, is go it a first. Yes, it is. Thank you. Move on. And I like that. So they took a quick peek and the first down was good. Rule first down. Rule first down on the field. There you go. I would think that Tiger would be a little happier than that right now. He, he looks like a worried Tiger. Well, he's 10-10 <laughs> and he knows how hard everything's been. I'll tell you, this is a, a, a again, just a good, just a really good football game. I mean, some people are always loving 40, you know, 40 point games and stuff. To me, this is my favorite style of football game where your defenses are just so intense. And when you do have a big play, it means so much more because you know, you know how hard you have to fight for that one. Alcorn with a big victory last week over Prairie View. The Tigers have won seven straight. The handoff straight up the middle is Anderson. Wow. And that's what we saw Anderson do a couple of weeks ago, just slashing inside, picking up that yardage. And it's just impressive because of how, how tough the Tigers' uh, offense is. And, and honestly, the offensive line, you know, most people think, well, as an offensive lineman, you've got to blow someone out of there, right? What they're doing is just keeping engaged with the defender, keeping their head on a certain side and taking them where they want to go or stalemating them and let the running back go where he needs to go. Anderson picked up seven. So they give it to him again. This time he tries to bounce outside. He spins back inside and he's close to another first down for the Braves. Could have been a negative play and you think he turned it into a positive. Man, this is a big running back. You look at him 6-1. 225. He's a senior out of Baton Rouge, transferred in from Northwestern State in Louisiana. But he runs hard. I mean, he is a tough, tough runner. And now, don't be surprised. Here we coming up here, third down and a yard to go for the Braves to keep possession of this football. That's going to be interesting because the Tigers are going to key on him. They're, they're going to sell out to get him. Will they surprise him and run a different play? And play yeah. action. I'm just telling you, it, it, this game's been that kind of play, right? And they want to talk about it because there's a timeout on the field. Jackson State. So Jackson State. 30 second timeout. Time Jackson State calls the timeout. You know, that's a big play in this ball game. It's third and one. Yeah, no, I'm telling you, I, I think it's one of those things that you're going to see them uh, cue on them. Let's go down to Kayla on the sideline. <laughs> Kayla Thompson for that report. So we come back to that crucial down third and one for the Braves. Felix Harper has gone all the way at quarterback. Puts a man in motion to his left. He rose to the left and fires in the flat there to the short guy. He was trying to hit number five on the play and it's an incomplete pass. That was Nico Duffy who had come out of the backfield. Look at the coverage, John Huggins. Right there, just breaks on the ball and taps it on the back end. 
Really good job by Huggins. Got over there on his man. They put Nico Duffy in motion. Thought they could kind of run him loose into the sidelines, but Huggins would have none of that. So it's fourth and one. We saw Harper go to the sidelines. So uh, I was wondering whether or not they would go to it. You see Harper on the sidelines. So they will punt the football away. Rubens Boplan gets a low kick and it goes out of bounds. Whew, shy of the 25, probably like walk right at the 25 yard line. So first and 10 for Jackson State from that point. It's not the punt they were looking for, <laughs> that's for sure. But it started with a, a very low snap. He was able to grab the ball. Uh, he did get the punt off, but he didn't get it the way he wanted. He kind of had to rush it. You know, so much, I, I wonder if Coach McNair, if there'd be a different type scenario where there's not so much on the line. That was fourth and one. They were in great field position. His defense has been playing well today. But if they lose today, basically their championship hopes are over. So... Yeah, but I think the way your defense has been playing, right? I mean, you, you want the Tigers to have to drive the length of the field or as long as you can. You don't want to make it any shorter than you need to. And uh, and again, second second half, both offenses have been more successful than the first. Sanders in the pocket, under some pressure, fades back, fires near the sideline, and he threw it away. It's an incomplete pass. And again, right there, I mean, you get to, what is this? Uh, <laughs> well, oh, that, yeah, that was uh, in the Academy Award. That was actually. interesting. That not because even award. Tony Gray was in front of Solomon Wise, and <laughs> Solomon Wise was preparing for the WWE or something right there. I mean, that was. Uh, Watch well, to take another look at it again. I mean, they're at the bottom of the screen on the right, bottom right. <laughs> wow, that, that was. Uh, there's no Academy Award, no Emmy, no nothing going to that guy. And the official is laughing. He wasn't buying it either. He yeah. helped him up. He's like, go back on the other yeah, side. Knock it off. <laughs> I mean, I used to throw a flag right there for unsportsmanlike conduct right there. Bad acting. <laughs> Second down and 10 for the Tigers. Pass is complete. And it's a first down for Jackson State. So a good pass from Sanders to Corbin, and it picks up the first down. I thought Corbin was going to run himself out of the first down there for a second. But again, good strike. Watch. Plants his feet. That's one where he planted and really, really targeted. Good job. Tigers are doing so much better in the offensive line here in the second half as far as protecting Sanders. He's had to scramble around some, but on that last play, I mean, he had a nice, clean passing window. You're right. You're right. Uh, and again, I think that the offenses have made some adjustments on both defenses. So the give inside, that is Pickett. Pickett breaks the tackle and is still on his feet. Peyton Pickett with a nice game for the Tigers. That's another first down for Jackson State. He doubled his yards on one run right there, I believe. He just did a great job of just, just spinning, turning. There was only a small little hole, and he darted through it and then just found a way to get an extra 10 actually con after yeah, contact. A 20-yard pickup for Peyton Pickett, the 225-pounder who transferred from Liberty. Big run. Shadur Sanders with the pass to Corbin again, and that'll pick up five or six. And Corbin might be injured on the play. He was hit hard, and he's grabbing that lower back area. Yeah, I think the way he got hit, it put a lot of tension on that lower back. The way he got bent back right there, and again, the ball was a bit high, and he had to stretch up, and then as he was stretching up, he got hit. Man, that's Jawan Taylor who got up there with a big stick. Yeah, I mean, and it looks like the helmet kind of hit him pretty hard. Now, Dion's rolling on the field. I'm not sure that's... <laughs> I guess no one's going to stop him anywhere. You know, most football team, anyone who's played on a, on a football team, there's usually, you call them the sideline police, people, they back everyone up, back everyone up. Right now, if you don't get back, you're going to get rolled over. You're going to get run over, yes, <laughs> indeed. Right, you better be off that, that area. Coach Prime on the sideline, pacing in the wheelchair. So second and five. And the handoff to Pickett again, and Pickett is just banging his way for yardage. He gets another first down. Just, I mean, just 
just look at the battles in there. I'm just staring each play, just the, the collisions that are going on. It, it's 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 impressive. Yeah, six yards for Peyton Pickett. That offensive line has just come to life. They're opening some big holes with 30 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Shadour Sanders looking deep, has a man, and it is a touchdown for Jackson State. Shane Hooks got behind the secondary, and Shadour Sanders put the football right on the money. I mean, this drive, they've had better running performances than they had all game long, right? You start to get that run, defenses start to collapse inside, and what do you do? You spring a nice long pass in there for a touchdown. And again, that was perfectly on target. Well, you know, you, you said it, man. It's just pound, 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 and all of a sudden you fake the pound and go up top. And he was wide open. And Sanders put the football right on the money. So the extra point is drilled. And Jackson State jumps out in front. Thanks to that TD pass. Sanders. And again, they really didn't even run play action so much. It was a great pattern. Look how much distance he got between him and the defender. We couldn't see it there, but there was a juke to the right or a little bit of lean to the right that had the defender thinking he was going to go, you know, to the to the to the flag instead of post inside. And then you get three, four yards in there. But I, I, I think you said it earlier. You touched on it. When you run the football as well as they're running the football, your eyes tend to start looking inside. You starting to expect that run. And just right. when you expect it, somebody will run behind you. And that's what happened there. Yeah, and again, it's, it's this, this first drive, right? You've seen runs really start to spring. And again, it's the adjustments and then the, the power of the offensive line that just staying consistent and getting after it. Bailey Rayborn gets set to kick it off for the Tigers. So they jump out in front with 23 ticks to go here in the third quarter. This is a nice drive. Yeah. It may, may have been their best drive of the day. I, I think so. Yeah. The only other one, they didn't have all the penalties that they had before, remember? So the kick sails into the end zone, and the Braves will come out and go first and 10 from the 25. This second half has been a little different from the first half because both offenses have come to life. And it, Jackson State scores, so now the Braves have to answer. Yeah, and they, and they found, right, some, some – in the first half, there were no peaks. There was no little – there was no room for anything. You earned every single thing. Uh, he went into halftime, and obviously the offense coordinators were able to find a couple of things and say, here, let's try some of this, let's try some of that. And they found a few little bugaboos now that they're that they're working with. And, and, and again, still, everything's earned. Defenses are playing great. But they found a few things. Let's see if the Braves can capitalize here. Harper back in at quarterback, first and 10. Fakes it inside, rolls out to his left, and he throws the football. The pass is be behind the intended receiver that time. Holmes with good coverage for the Tigers. He does it all. <laughs> so that's an incomplete pass on first down. So they'll line it up again. This time he has Javata Leatherwood in the backfield. We saw him briefly in the first half. This time he lines up to the right of Felix Harper. There's another big back, too. Harper looks to his left, scrambles out to the left, still pumping, now throws up top, and he goes incomplete pass as he threw it out of bounds. So good coverage over there by John Huggins. And you, can, you can see Harper there. They've got him more on the roll now. Right there trying to create some space for him. And that's uh, in the second half. You didn't see it in the first half a lot, but he's doing that nice little roll out. They're rolling out to his. He's a lefty, so they're rolling him out to that left side. They start uh, a play moving to the right, and then they roll him back out like a kind of a bootleg. So now after the two incomplete passes, it's going to bring up a third down and 10 yards to go for the Braves. Harper. Will pass. Steps up in the pocket. Fires has a man inside. It's caught. A nice catch there. And it should be the first down as it's pulled in by C.J. Bowler. 
Yeah, Bowler, nice catch because Al Young was all over him like drapery. <laughs> and he still caught that ball. And what you want to notice, he put his hands out and, and attacked the ball with his hands first. So he was able to touch it first. So that'll take us to the break. Jackson. set to start the uh, fourth quarter in Jackson, Mississippi, and as you can see, we have a packed house here today. They were hoping to have more than 62,000 on hand, and I'm willing to bet. We still haven't gotten the final word, but I bet they did it. The record for this series, Jackson State versus Alcorn State, 62,512, and that's the record they were trying to stop today. Obviously, standing room only. Uh, it's close regardless whatever yes. happened, but the energy here is absolutely phenomenal great great college experience These type of games like this and again uh, that w and, the, and, the, and the game itself has lived up to the to the hype Oh, it's been like one of those huge championship fights You know you just bang 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 you keep punching each other out and we'll see who's going to be the last man standing the Braves have the football now It's a second and eight Harper rolls out and he's hit, but there is a flag down. Harper was sacked by Keontae Hampton, but it may be holding on the play against the Braves. We'll have to see what the call is, but what a rush by Keontae Hampton. Oh, yeah. Offense, number 79. So is T.J. Yarborough, who is the guilty party, 
who was called for holding on that play. And Hampton's the happier one saying, hey, pick that up. I'm, I, don't count my, I'm on my sack. <laughs> Look at that, coming off the edge. So Hampton and Miller are just a deadly duo when it comes to linebackers for, for the Tigers. Well, they're just so quick reacting to the football. So it's another third down here, third and 16 to go for the first down. But they're, they're not only are they active on the field, they're, they're so quick also. So Harper gives inside, and again, this time it's James Houston who read the play and made the tackle for Jackson State. And there's that guy that wanted to be a linebacker, finds himself a defensive end, and somehow finds a way to get that backfield all the time. Man, that's excellent technique. He, yes. he stayed there, waited, saw nothing was coming to the outside, and slanted in to make the stop. As you see right there, Warren Newman going back to return the punt for the J-State Tigers. Yeah, he went right down the line of scrimmage. He didn't get deep, right? A lot of times ends will come, and they want to get too far deep. You create a packed seam. He went right down the line of scrimmage and just ate him up. Just a great job. Loss of one on the play as Bo Plan gets his kick away and it goes out of bounds. We're going to pause for a timeout now. Jackson State out in front, 17 to 10. Thirteen oh nine to go here in the fourth quarter in Jackson, Mississippi, and you see the Tigers from Jackson State leading the Braves from Alcorn, seventeen ten, and Jay State with the football. They start off with a run on the ground. That's Pickett trying to weave his way inside. That time though, not getting much. Couple of yards there for Peyton Pickett and the offense. What a great atmosphere! I just got to say it. I mean, this is this is a great atmosphere for football. I don't, if you like this sport. You gotta like what's going on here today. Sonic Boom of the South. You know, both bands were tremendous at yeah. the halftime. I mean, that was an incredible performance, and uh, yeah. it, it, it was it was excellent. So we got 12:35, second and nine. As you see, the Braves trying to adjust on defense. Sanders is going to throw under some pressure. Fires out. He completes his pass to Corbin, and those two have been in sync today. Keith Corbin the third with a nice catch there, but he and Sanders have definitely been on the same page. They sure have, and I, I had a lot of respect. Look at Sanders right here. He sees him in his face. He stands in there and makes the throw. That was huge. That's that's huge. 
big completion sets up a third and manageable third and three as the Braves come up and fake the blitz. That was Kieran Kinsler who came right up on the line of scrimmage and here he comes again. Sanders sees him. So there's a little cat and mouse game going oh, on he's here. Coming. He's coming. Third and three. Sanders will throw it. Has a man. The first down. Warren Newman picks it up. The 5'10", 175 pound senior from New Orleans coming up with a big catch there. Yeah, that's one of those things. You know he's coming. There's going to be some guys open. You're going to have a lot of one on one opportunities. You got to find him quick, get rid of the ball. It's exactly what he did. Jawan Taylor hanging on for dear life, making that tackle there. <laughs> so another first down for the Tigers as the clock continues to roll. Pick it in the backfield. He's to Sanders right in the backfield. High snap, but Sanders handles it. Gives to Pickens. Pickens has some room, but a flag did go down. There was a flag on the play, but how about that quick move by the big running back? He's yeah. like listed at about 225, 230. And that was impressive because you had a lot of... Offense, number 51, 10-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, because you had a lot of penetration coming right at you, and the fact that he had the quick feet to be able to get around that and accelerate out of that, that was impressive. That was a good big man move in the yep. backfield, but it's all for naught because the Tigers were guilty of holding, so that will back them up after Pickett had picked up the first down. Well, the Tigers have liked that, uh, you know, first and 15s and... <laughs> third and 20s and so maybe that's what they're getting them right where they want them they've had a lot of success converting on those situations so it's going to bring up a first and 20 now as he puts uh, Newman in motion Sanders with a lot of time that time has a man wide open it's Corbin and he dives down over the 40 and a nice catch by Keith Corbin the third now put Corbin over 100 yards on the game here and he has been clutch and I'll tell you, he's a guy that finds a way to use his body, get himself open, and he's sure-handed with the ball. Well, he's been outstanding today, doing a great job. So it's going to bring it up second and short after that big gain to Keith Corbin there. Gain of about 17, 18 yards on the play. So Sanders now with J.D. Martin to his left. On second and short, a bad snap. Shadour handles it, and then he's taken down. But he does a good job to recover the bad snap. But he's taken down. That's going to go down as a sack in the backfield. Yeah, he had to jump up and kind of bat it to himself. Right? Watch this right here. He has to jump up, taps it. If he wasn't able to tap that ball, that would have been in deep trouble there. Boy, number 44, Jacorian Wren in the backfield again. I mean, he has lived in that Jackson State backfield Johnny, today. The, the penetration that both these defensive lines have been able to get, but you're right, Bren, it's just, uh, he's had some special moves inside, used power and also some just slick inside moves. And it's just amazing how quick they're getting back there. Third and 14 now for the Tigers. Sanders has to step up under some heat again, fires high. That was a dangerous pass as he tried to throw back across his body. Was trying to hit Shane Hooks again, who had the touchdown a little while earlier in this ball game. But that's going to go down as an incomplete pass. Yeah, I thought there might have been some interference on there. The, his, the arm was hit. But I guess because it was tipped, there is no interference. Tip ball. So no. that will bring up fourth down and the, we'll punt it back over to the Braves. So Lane, Lane McGregor back out to kick the football away and a good defensive stand. Good defensive stand by the Braves from Alcorn State. Low snap, but McGregor handles it. Kicked it away quickly, and this one's not going to go too far. Is it going to be down right about the 21-yard line? So that is where the Braves will take over. They trail in this ball game, 17 to 10. We'll be right.
Swag Football on ESPN is presented by Cricket. Smile, you're on Cricket. By Pepsi Zero Sugar, official partner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And by USAA, the official military appreciation partner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Welcome back, everyone. We are winding down in the fourth quarter of what has been an outstanding ball game with a lot of swings back and forth right now. Jackson State out in front 17-10. Lots of implications in this game. If J-State would win, they would host the SWAC championship as we pick up Alcorn State with the ball. First and 10. Harper gets it away to Duffy. And a good, quick reaction from that defense. I said, if J-State wins, they get to host the SWAC championship. On the other side, if Alcorn State wins, they stay alive for a chance to become the champions in the West. I'll tell you, you're right. A lot on the line, and that's why you see guys just giving it their all right there. James Houston, <laughs> the defensive end for, for the Tigers, just hammered. I mean, just, just came flying through at Harper, and Harper did everything he could to, to get rid of that ball and just did an a, a incredible job of getting rid of it, knowing he's going to get the heat. Harper turns and hands straight away to Stanford Anderson. Anderson's been the workhorse today inside. Yeah, you know, on a tough running day like today, 80 yards, 5.7 a carry for him. He earned every every one of them. Man. So a big third down coming up here for the Braves. Felix Harper came into this game ranked fourth in the SWAC in passing, completing more than 62% of his passes. But this is a big down. He trails by seven in this ball game with 8.05 to go here in the fourth quarter. So Harper tried to go quickly inside. And a great defensive play. Number three, C.J. Holmes jumped the route and knocked the pass away. He read what was coming that time. Yeah, Coach Prime said over and over, I've got a bunch of DBs. And whoever practices really hard plays. Whoever doesn't, doesn't play. So they're fighting for jobs every single day. And you watch them fight when they cover. I mean, you can just see how aggressive they are and how they attack the ball. I mean, look at them all. Handshakes, I have no way I could keep up with all that. <laughs> Much less to play on the field, but again, he has. He says his whole thing about his DBs are compete, compete, compete. Every every play in practice, every play obviously in the game, and you compete all the time. And whoever earns it each week, that's who's going to be on the field. So both plan under a lot of pressure, but he gets the kick away, and a line drive kick that carries, but Newman tracks it down. So here comes Warren Newman the other way. Newman trying to get to the outside, cuts inside, and makes a pretty nice return all the way to the 24-yard line, but that catch by Warren Newman was outstanding as that kick was really boomed down there. Yeah, the over-the-shoulder catch, nice. We'll be...
Swag Football on ESPN is presented by General Motors, proud sponsor of the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and by Home Depot, proud sponsor of the Swag. And we have ourselves a real shootout here in Jackson, Mississippi at Veterans Memorial Stadium as Jackson State, the Tigers, have the football and the lead. They lead this one 10-7. We are in the fourth quarter, counting down with about seven minutes to go, 7.15 to go here in the fourth quarter. So Shadur Sanders has gone all the way at quarterback today. This time gets good protection, and that was a... Uh, he had, to, he had to just throw it away, and I laughed because the running back that time actually grabbed the jersey of one of the defenders right in front of the officials. <laughs> and he was picking, and you can see the official talking to him about it there, but he didn't, didn't look like he threw the flag. Interesting, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, no harm, no foul. On that no, play. There was harm, <laughs> just no foul. <laughs> Let's get that right. <laughs> Depending on what jersey color you're pulling for, but there was harm. <laughs> so Pickett actually stays in the game now. He's going to line up to Sanders' left. Two wide receivers down here on the right. Sanders looking that way with the pass, completes it to Lanier, and he is caught and dropped. Josh Lanier had nowhere to go as he is stopped as soon as he caught that football. From a curious blunt on that uh, tackle right here. Look at right there. Short tackling gets around the hips takes him down. Man, Macari is blunt. You could go down the list. Jacorian Wren, I mean, they've had some guys. Dare has been good today. I mean, this has just been an outstanding defensive effort on both ends, and that is going to set up a third and long, probably third and about 13 yards to go for a first down, make it 12. As Shadur Sanders calls out the signals. Sanders had to step up again, some pressure. This time he just dumps it off to Pickett. It's going to be on Pickett to make the first down, and let's see where they mark him. Looks like he's a little shy there. Peyton Pickett, he's played a nice ball game today. He sure has. I thought he may have squeezed that one out. I can't see the yard marks, but, man, that was a, that was a good, good job. Look at Sanders. Look how nice little steps. I mean, you, you do drills like that when they do quarterbacks drilling around the cones and how you move, and it shows that he all that work pays off because he could have easily <laughs> been sacked right back there. So they're all going to mark it down, and it is a first down now. The chains move, and Pickett moved the stick. So a big first down for the Tigers with 5.41 to go in the ball game. So now for Alcorn State, the opponent is the clock and the Tigers. Wide open on the pass, a good play and a first down for the Tigers. Shadur Sanders to Shane Hooks, who had a touchdown pass earlier today. Mixing it up, Been going to Corbin a lot. Looks like Hooks getting in the action, saying, I want some of this. And again, the nice crossing pattern. Gets, gets uh, some separation from the defender, big first down. Sanders does a great job with the quick release on that because the pressure was there in a hurry, but he got rid of the football quickly and they picked up the first down. Yeah, I mentioned Corbin a second ago, 108 yards, eight receptions, 108 yards, and hooks, three catches, 52 yards, averaging 17.3 a catch. That's pretty impressive. You know, and Sanders a nice day here, 25 completions, so he's averaging just under 70%. You know, pass completions, 273 yards, two touchdowns, and he's been sacked twice, so he's had a busy day, but effective. And we do have an Alcorn State player injured on the play. It looks like they're about to help him up now. It's number 20, that's Christopher Dare. And he's gonna limp off the field, so that did not look good. That's certainly tender. So Jackson State here in the middle of a big drive, and this is crucial for Alcorn State. If, if, you know, if they're gonna have any chance in this ball game, they're going to want to put the brakes on this drive. Well, they have to. I mean, they have to. And again, uh, you know, if you're the Tigers, you want what you know, they call it the eight-minute drive, right? You want to be able to just chew up clock and eat. But they're doing it. They're not just running the ball. They're not hammering it at them. And I think it's, it's probably caught the Braves a little bit off guard, the fact that they're still open up and they're still attacking uh, with the offense and not just running the ball. So I mean, they're, they're, they're finding holes and they're, they're attacking going at it. 
So J.D. Martin checks into the ball game at running back. He starts off on Sanders to Sanders' right. Blitz coming. Sanders unloads quickly, though. He saw the blitz through right where the blitz came from. Has his man. That is hooks again. And he's doing a fantastic job after making the catch and moving upfield. But give Sanders a lot of credit. He saw where the blitz came from and threw right into that area. He sure did. And I'm telling you, the Braves are thinking they're just going to run. And they're, they're ready for that run. They're trying to run out the clock a little bit. And, and uh, the Tigers are still in an attack mode. Because they know you, you're only up seven. You've got you want to get points, you got to you got to attack. Another flag down on the field. We will see if the play will stand. You probably need a for the Tigers detergent uh, sponsor for all the flags that get thrown and get all dirty. Yeah. After the play, unsportsmanlike defense number 44. Counts the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Number Unsportsmanlike. Is ejected from the game. He's wow. Ejected. He ejected. Yes. He called unsportsmanlike conduct against the Braves. And there was an ejection on the play. That is Jacorian Wren, number 44, who's headed for the locker room. What a big loss. That is a huge loss. That's keeping your composure, right? You have to keep your composure in those moments. And well, obviously, this is a, exactly, this is a key moment in the yeah. ball game. You don't want to do that. And look where it sets him up now, with a first and ten, and the football resting right around the twelve. Sanders are just trying to get them set on the offensive end. This has been a long drive. And now the Braves are trying to call timeout. They cannot get straight on defense, and they will have to use that timeout. And Jackson State. This charge to Jackson State, not all points. But what was interesting, watch Sanders. Sanders jumped in the line and told the ref, you need to get out of the way because they're confused. It's not my problem, <laughs> right? Their confusion is not my problem. They don't know who to sub in and out. And I do think that, I, I, you know, I think he's right on that, right? I mean, you give them a moment to sub, but if they can't figure out what they're doing, that's on them. Yeah, is, if the offense makes a substitution, the defense is given an opportunity to sub also, but it doesn't give you all day to do it. C correct. <laughs> I mean, you can't sit there and make them, and, th and then what? You get out of the way, and then if they can't get the ball snapped that quick, then it's on the offense, and you're going to call delay a game? There's a balance there, and Sanders jumped right in behind. I thought I didn't know what he was doing at first, but I realized what he was doing. He's yelling at the ref, like, look, get out of the way. <laughs> Yeah, there have been a lot of outstanding defensive plays, players today. And if you look, you know, there's nobody better than James Houston, of course, for the Jackson, Jackson State Tigers. He's been outstanding. You look at Alcorn, they've had several guys. We talked about a few of them before. Macarius, Macarius Blunt has been outstanding. Yes, of course, Jacorian Red was great, but he just got tossed out of the ball game for the unsportsmanlike penalty. Yeah, and I can't let you get out without not talking about uh, Keontae Hampton and Aubrey Miller, too, the two great linebackers for for the Tigers as well I mean you know you're right James Houston gets it done but man those Hampton and Miller to me Miller just, and Hampton have been outstanding today wow. I mean there's so many plays you can you can you can point to for this and that was a big play on first down as the Braves rose to the occasion and shut it down short game for the Tigers so second down now ball resting right at about the nine yard line for the Tigers and Shadour Sanders you see him walk up to the line to talk to the offensive lineman. Pickens wants to be sure he knows what's going on. He's to Sanders' left. Second and eight. They put a man in motion. It's Martin. He takes the handoff. Slices back inside. And Martin is going to be dropped after a short gain inside. Jaden Barfield made the stop for the Braves. That Braves defense is still just battling, and, and, and again, they're going to make them earn every little inch, and looks like they're going to take some time to talk about it because, again, I do. I think this is this is important, right? You, you need to know what you want to do, what you need to accomplish, where you think you need to attack, and again, this is part of the chess game, too. What do you think they're going to do? How are they going to come at us? Here's how I want you to attack them, right? And again, you don't have Ren in here who's been, who's been spectacular, right? I mean, that's a, that's a big hurt for them. But now how are we going to adjust? Because we may have done it a different way. 
Yeah, they get, they need a big play. We have 338 to go in the ball game. And basically minus that long TD pass to Montario Hunt. You know, it, it's, it's taken some drives to get downfield. So uh, Harper did have the one pass way downfield. That was the quick strike. Mm -hmm. But in this situation, you know, the defense is going to go to their pass coverage. So it's going to be tough. They, they have to try to turn them away right here because any score here by Jackson State makes it a two-score ball game. Ball game. Yeah, and just 338 left. I mean, that's tough. So third down now for the Tigers. Ball around the seven-yard line. Sanders will throw it. Drops it underneath to Pickett. Pickett puts a move on one man, still on his feet as he dives down to the five-yard line. So Pickett gets it a little closer, a couple of more yards. But more, more importantly than that, he had the clock continue to roll. Yeah, Rasul Muhammad with a good tackle there. You got to make those open field tackles are incredibly hard and difficult. Breaks down, does a great job, grabs that leg and not letting go. Alcorn State did call timeout, so they're going to talk it over on the sideline here. As more importantly than anything else, it's going to bring up fourth and five. Last time, Coach uh, Prime and the Tigers were down here on a fourth and goal situation. They went for it late in the first half with just seconds to go. And they got the touchdown from Sanders to Corbin. And so now, but this is a different situation. Yeah, watch right there. Coach Sanders wheeled out there at 74. Tony Gray was out there causing a commotion. And, and he's having none of that. Right? And again, that's where you got to keep your composure. You got to have your character at all times. You can't let it go. Right? You can't get involved in the talking. The, the Alcorn, the, the Braves coaches wanted a flag thrown on them and, and, and again didn't see exactly how it all started but the refs quickly broke them up moved them away but you, you've got to keep your composure it's, it's a heated game and there was an altercation at the end of last week's game with four players two from uh, from Jackson State two from Southern being suspended so coach Prime said we're not going to let that happen again mm -hmm. we're not going there so this time number 39 is Noah Anderson is out for the field goal attempt for the Tigers. Looks like a 22 yard field goal attempt. Snap is good, hold is good, and his kick is right through the uprights. So Noah Anderson comes in to tack on three more, 331 to go. It's 2010. Jackson State out front. The airport can be a real challenge for new yeah, homeowners yeah. who have become their parents. Okay, everybody, let's do a ticket check. Paper tickets. We're off to a horrible start.
Thurston. Welcome back, everyone. And as you can see, down on the sidelines of Jackson State fans, uh, look, that looks very appetizing there, you know? Yeah. It looks know. kind of fruity, doesn't it? Yeah, looking for the hula ball. I don't know. <laughs> Man, that looks good. So wait a minute, we're digging it. Has Shadur Sanders back on the field. Fires into the end zone. And that is to Keith Corbin there. So obviously it was a flag down on the field goal attempt. And so Corbin comes on. We During the break, there was a flag down. And so they get the ball, they yes. decline the penalty and get the ball and go for go for six. No, what, what happened was it was a penalty on the play that allowed them to take the three points off the board. <laughs> and so it was, uh, Coach Sanders decided to go for the touchdown, and they did. And once again, it's Shadour Sanders to Corbin for the touchdown. Wow. So this time the extra point is good. So we go from taking three points off the board when we left to go to commercial break it looked like there was a, a field goal made and it was but there was a flag down that we didn't see so they took the three points off the board and they came back and decided to go for it again for the second time in this ball game and they converted that converted the touchdown sanders to keith corbin you talk about ice in the game right there. And our defensive player of the game comes from Jackson State. It's Aubrey Miller at linebacker. I, I can't say enough about how he's played. Just absolutely fantastic. Five solo tackles, two assists, seven total. And again, he was he made so much more happen because even when he wasn't getting that tackle, he was causing commotion, allowing his other teammates to get them get the tackles and get I mean just just fantastic. Our defensive player of the game brought to you by Pepsi Zero Sugar and it's Aubrey Miller who actually came into this game as the uh, second leading tackler in the SWAC. Yeah, he had 83 to come in. That, that's pretty special. Yeah. So now Bailey Rayborn will kick it off. After Noah, Noah Anderson made a field goal that got taken off the board and then he made an extra point. So a low kick from Rayborn goes all the way down. It's going to be scooped up by the Braves. Uh, it's Bowler coming back. Skips one tackler. Till on his feet. Actually, that is going to be number 10, Manny Jones, on the return. Jones doing a great job of bringing it back for the Braves. Tell you what, something special almost happened right there, right? A little bit of confusion. He came out of that corner and he was on a mission. And again, you know, if you're the Braves, you got it all on the line right here. Great to see Manny Jones as you see him over talking to the offensive coordinator Elliot Rathen as he brings it back a couple weeks ago We did the game Manny Jones had a horrible G game could not hang on to the balls and he, and he came back and almost took this one all the way to the house Yeah, he just couldn't find his footing A couple weeks ago, right? Yeah, yeah he just, just couldn't seem to just a little out of sync Yeah, he just, his hands on the ball just kind of just fumbling a little bit and just Now three minutes to go in this one 313 Harper could not get away tried to duck underneath the rush and he is pulled down no chance to get away on that one Niles Gaddy but kind of quiet today but made a big stop there make it when it matters right look at big number 99 my gosh <laughs> Antoine Owens he just absolutely abused that line so that's a loss of four on the sack, make it five, second and 15 to go for the Braves. And here comes the heat again. Good job by Harper to avoid the sack. And then Harper does everything he can as Miller touched him down. But Harper did a great job of getting out of the pocket. Yeah, I mean, it's look at 94 just coming off that edge right there. Coinus Miller. So that's going to bring up third down as the clock ticks down toward the two minute mark in this ball game. Third and about nine for the Braves. So this is definitely two down territory. They trail 24 to 10. And if they're going to do something. They better move quick. They're going to have the pace has got to be a lot quicker than that. Harper with a clean pocket throws it upfield and he has his first down as he completes the pass. A nice pass to Nico Duffy. 
who came in out of the backfield picked up a big first down for the Braves. 142 and county. And a lot of time in between plays. Harper this time has to dump it off near the sideline goes to Duffy again and he barely makes it back to the line of scrimmage a really good play by CJ Holmes. Yeah, and he keeps him in bounds. He doesn't let him get to the boundary doesn't let him get outside that clock's got to keep going. That's huge. Well, nice tackle no by CJ Holmes. Yeah, he made them use I guess that he made him use that timeout. You know if the Tigers are able to hold on here it will be win number eight in a row. You know, they lost earlier this year to Louisiana Monroe mm -hmm. in a game that they could have won. They actually, it was less than a touchdown. They could have won that ball game. And I, I just think you look at the job, what Coach Prime has done since he's come here, bringing in guys like T.C. Taylor and Dennis Thurman, who we mentioned, the defensive coordinator who has all that NFL experience. And they have just put together a wheel of a team. I think, you know, it's funny uh, from the outside looking in, a lot of people just thought it was some kind of splash that, that uh, you know, Deion Sanders was doing and why was he doing this and why is he wasting his time? Why is he doing this? You know, and, and, and from our conversation we had with him, he's doing it because he wants to do it and he wants to spread and give some joy to some of these guys and give the opportunities that some of them aren't getting. And he wanted to even a little bit of the playing field. And he's not just helping Jackson State. He's helping the whole SWAT. And he's good for this conference, and he's he's good for football, and you can see how much he loves all of his players, too. I mean, it's genuine. So Harper runs second and ten. Boy, he did a lot of dancing in the pocket, but he completes the pass. A good job getting it upfield to C.J. Bowler. And he's thrown way back, and now we have a whistle on the field. Yeah, he threw that under duress and did a really good job getting that off. I've been real impressed with Harper today. He's, he's played really, really well. And again, both quarterbacks have not had, a, you know, just an easy time back yeah. there in, in the backfield. They've been under pressure from the opening snap from the, the first. So they're having some problems with the game clock. They're going to go back and add some time on the clock. So they want 115 right now. They got 105, so they need to add a little bit more. <laughs> I think he may have just gotten ejected there. I'm not sure. So Harper here on third and one. Fires near the sideline. What a catch over there. That's a great catch. And we're trying to see who it was. It was number 16, Juan Anthony Jr. Man, that young man went up and let it all hang he out sure on did. that one and made a great catch. But now they're saying it. they just called it incomplete now. Wow. They well, can't make up their mind here on this you one. You can't take away from that catch, though. That was just a great catch. Ooh, I thought his legs. Well, you see, that guy thought he was in, too. And then I guess the other guy thought he had a better look, the other official. I don't know. I thought that was a catch. Wow. They're going to bring it back. So it's fourth and one. The last opportunity for Felix Harper and the Braves to keep this drive alive. You know, even on the replay, it looked like he got one down. I'm so surprised I'm, they're not I'm looking not, at it. I'm <laughs> sure uh, Coach McNair would love to get this looked at, but don't know if yeah. it's going to happen. So here it is, fourth and one to keep the drive alive. It's a long one for Felix Harper. Steps up in the pocket. He could have run for it. Instead, he passes for it. It is complete to Juan Anthony Jr. That is the first down for the Braves. But the clock will stop while they get reset, and then it'll start again. So a good job by Juan Anthony just to get the first down. So Harper goes quickly. Looking in the end zone. Over the top, and it's incomplete. Threw that into double coverage. Good throw, though. Trying to hit Pringle on the play. I like the attempt. You got to go to the end zone here at some point. If you really want any real, any kind of legitimate chance, you got to get in the end zone quickly. Well, you took a shot there, yeah. and it's just a double coverage on the play. Mm -hmm. You mentioned how well the quarterbacks were playing. The mm -hmm. one turnover, and that was on a tip pass. Right. Exactly. Because both of them are very sure passers. They, 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 they don't just fling it. 
They're getting ready to pass out some uh, Eastern Championship shirts there in uh, Eastern Division. So Harper on second and 10, look out, here comes Harper, and he got it away. As Houston came around the side to get Harper, but Harper got it away. Let's see where the official well, put I it down. his knee was down. They're going to have to sort through that because Felix Harper did unload the football right when he was going down. Yeah, just going to let it roll. Let and clock the going. clock is counting down here. And the spike by the Braves will stop the clock with 11 seconds to go. Yeah, Harper's hurting. I'm telling you, when he hit that, I, I thought his knee was bent down and he was bowed back as he was throwing that. He was stretched out. That young man's played a heck of a game, though. So you can see Harper looking near the sidelines. 15 seconds to go. I tell you what, the Braves came in today, and Fred McNair had his team ready to play. I it's mean, been a great football game. Both teams have been well prepared, well coached, uh, just in great execution. Harper in trouble, and he will go down. Big pressure from that Jackson State front. Jeremiah Brown. And again, when you when you know they're going to pass, and you know their situation, and, and the Tigers get you in that type of situation it is just it is tough jeremiah brown on the sack in the backfield so harper has been running for his health this entire game <laughs> yes he has i'll tell you what his teammates are happy for brown look at him i just That's a, a whole big lot of win for the tigers it's good win number eight in a row they will probably move up even further in the rankings in FCS. I mentioned today in the t-shirts. <laughs> yeah, in the coaches poll, they came in at 17 this week. And 19 in another poll. 17 in one, 19 in the other. And they just played. It was just a complete team effort today. Yep. Yeah, they did. I mean, they they, they played well. They earned it. Um, but, man, I, I can just tell you, both teams, really good football teams, well prepared. Execution on both sides were, were, were just was fantastic, and uh, but but Tigers earned it. I mean, flat out. Karee Lyles is now in to take a knee for the Jackson State Tigers, and that'll put an exclamation point on this one as the Jackson State Tigers and Coach Deion Sanders. Win for the eighth consecutive time, and you see Coach Prime there. He's got wheels now <laughs> as he looks for Coach McNair on the other side of the field. And they're trying to make sure they keep that's the ball game. It's a wrap. Y'all be safe out here, right there. The two head coaches, Fred McNair and Coach Deion Sanders from Jackson State, meet at midfield to talk about it i tell you what both these defenses set the tone in this ball game early yeah look at the players giving uh coach sanders respect if you don't think he matters and he's not magnetic look how many off players uh come over there and make sure they want to say his, hello to him and and uh he, he matters right and he matters to this conference he matters to his team uh and and, and if young players if anyone, young people can tell when someone's just talking or someone's actually doing. And, and he says he gives his players a lot. He, 